Hello, Play the Game family. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. This episode is brought to you by G2 Paintball. G2 Paintball is back, and you guys should be incredibly excited. If you are in the area, in Arizona, or anywhere on the West Coast, you want to make sure you do not miss this. Being in paintball shape is one of the most important things to being a top-level player. Not just a top-level pro, but a top-level player in any division. If you are trying to win tournaments, you want to be in the best physical condition possible. Paintball is so physically demanding, it requires so much of your physical ability, and G2 Paintball is designed to help you maximize that potential both on and off the field. G2 Paintball played a huge role in our World Cup win. It pays dividends to get out there and do these exercises, do these kinds of training. It is so difficult. It is very tough, but it's going to put you in position to win events, and that's what we're here to do. I teach this at all of my clinics. I always preach the importance of physical fitness in paintball ability. You can get all the way to the finals, but if you are only at 60% and a less talented, less skilled, less experienced team is at 90 or 100%, they are likely going to beat you. Do not let your physical ability be the reason you guys are not winning events. Get signed up for G2. If you guys are in the area, make sure you get active, get involved. It is owned and operated by Victor Gamboa and Rusty Glaze. You have players like Tyler Harmon, myself, Ryan Greenspan, all part of the entire G2 program. You guys can stay up to date with everything at g2paintball.com, and we hope to see you at an event very soon. This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need for paintball and to just have a great time out there at your local paintball fields. Um, They are amazing for the paintball community and they have got it all for you. Go to lonewolfpaintball.com to get any of your favorite brands and uh, head over there and take a quick surf on the Lone Wolf Paintball Wave at lonewolfpaintball.com. They have what you need at a great price and they boast amazing customer service and same day shipping, which is outstanding because it's always nice to order something and know it's on its way immediately. So go ahead, give them a look, check out their YouTube, uh, their Instagram. The Instagram name is Lone Wolf PB. YouTube is Lone Wolf Paintball, and uh, keep up to date with deals, sales, and content. Uh, PTG is absolutely honored to have them on board, so head over to LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. Play the Game podcast is brought to you by Transfuse. Transfuse is the greatest electrolyte formula in the universe. It is amazing. You need to have this stuff in your kitchen. You need to have it in your car, in your bag. If you're traveling, just have it around because it is going to save you. It is going to be that boost that you need to keep you going strong into your day and into a tournament for paintball. We absolutely love it and we've been using it religiously for over a year. Dynasty has been trying it out. We've been passing it out to all the guys and the proof is in the pudding. It has been working practices are able to last longer because we can play longer the tournaments have been obviously going well we won world cup and we were using transfuse out there it is easy it's portable it's delicious it's nutritious it's everything that you need in your life and you need to give it a try top pros are using it they're at all the nxl events and obviously if these top tier athletes are using it to be the best version of themselves you should probably give it a look Um, It has magnesium, potassium, and sodium to keep you hydrated. It has zinc, vitamin C, vitamin B, and choline to give you a cognitive and immunity boost. And it is delicious. (laughs) It is just good stuff. You're going to absolutely love this stuff. So I want you to try it. Tell us what you think. Give us a message. Tropical Bliss is my favorite, so maybe give that one a look. Um, They're going to be doing a lot of big things in 2021, so stay tuned for Transfuse and some of the big developments that they have. Don't be dehydrated. Use Transfuse. Um, Go to translabs.com, T-R-A-N-Z-L-A-B-S.com. Use code PLAYTHEGAME and you'll get 10% off. If you subscribe to a monthly service, you'll get an additional 11% off, so you could potentially take advantage of 21% off on Transfuse. Do not sleep on this stuff. Give it a look and enjoy. PTG is brought to you by Heal Brand CBD. They are a CBD powerhouse making a huge splash in the paintball industry in 2021 and beyond. 
be on the lookout for them at NXL events and everywhere in between. Uh, CBD is an absolute staple in my healing process, and they are helping out so many people. They want to heal the world, and we want to help them along on their mission to do that. They create the highest quality CBD products you've ever seen, and I know because I've been using them for quite some time. Um, they have amazing stuff like nanotechnology, which I only recently learned about, which is pretty spectacular. It is taking that large CBD particle, and what Heal Brand is doing is breaking that down into microscopic greatness with their process, which will allow for the particles of CBD to pass through your cell wall more quickly and more efficiently. As opposed to normal CBD, it could take some time before you start to feel the effects. With nanotechnology, you feel the effects immediately because that particle is getting through those cell walls with more efficiency and able to go to work quicker. Uh, people are using this stuff for inflammation, anxiety, and also as a sleep aid. Heal Brand has an amazing knockout shot that you have to check out. Um, you got to head over to the website and check out all these amazing products for your pets, for yourself, for recovery, and just for feeling better in life. They have a wide variety of benefits that CBD can provide. And my favorite that they have is the cool down cream. They have a cool down cream that I use for soreness and recovery after getting shot up with paintballs and I'm all bruised. It's nice to rub that stuff on there. And then also if you strain a muscle, it really helps with loosening it up and making it feel great. So head over to healbrand.com, H-E-A-L-B-R-A-N-D.com. Use code play the game and you will get 10% off of your orders. That is exclusively for the play the game family. We are so appreciative of everybody supporting us and supporting the sponsors. So head over and give Heal Brand a look. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the show this episode. We have Ryan Smith fresh off of their win from the Philadelphia Mid-Atlantic Open last weekend. Tyler, myself, and Ryan sit down and talk about the event, his upbringing, and his entire journey through paintball, as usual on the show. Um, but this was a great episode. It was a lot of fun. If you guys did not get to catch Heat out there, they were on fire, um, dominating through the prelims, only lost one game to level up, which was a little bit of a wake-up call and kind of made them that much more fierce on Sunday. We lost to them, uh, San Diego Dynasty, in the semifinal match, which was obviously painful to lose to Tyler right after he left. But you know, as we sit down, we discuss some of those things, and uh, Ryan Smith played a phenomenal role in that entire event. His performance was fantastic. He was consistent, a dominator, back center player, getting kills off the break, communicating, filling holes, and just doing a fantastic job. So really great to sit down with Ryan Smith and have him on the show. Without further ado, we'll see you in there. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. So Tyler Harmon saved that game. He came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Ryan Bird Smith from Houston Heat. Um, we're just coming off of a big win out in the you know, Philly area. It was in the Dust Bowl. We had a lot of fun running around and uh, and just playing paintball. How's it going, brother? Uh, it's great. I, I mean, can't ask for anything more, really and truly. We ran around like a bunch of Tasmanian devils. And yeah, created a dust storm and came out with a trophy. So, <laughs> dude, that's Hell a great yeah. way to explain it. It was absolutely a, a bunch of Tasmanian devils around there, dude. The Dust Bowl. Um, yeah. yeah, Ryan, super glad to have you, dude. Congrats on the big win. It was awesome to see you get the start and play as well as you did. Um, just seeing your journey, how you've gone from a player, then you coached Houston Heat, and then going back to, to competing. Obviously, you guys picked up my boy Ty, and uh, Fedorov came back, and you guys just looked really dominant all weekend long. So tons of cool stuff to talk about, man. I'm excited. Excited to have yeah. you here. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. excited for you guys to have me. This is awesome. Yeah, baby. Dude. <laughs> We did it, bro. We got the win. And there's so many <laughs> questions, right? Like with uh with everything that's been going on. Um what is the most like exciting aspect of of this new program that we've put together for you? Um and how are you feeling moving forward into everything? Um, I mean, probably the most exciting thing is just getting to do it with my family, you know. Uh back in two thousand twelve is when the team was started. Mm -hmm. Um and my parents took a leap of faith and, you know, they'd met 
Konstantin Fedorov, as my dad told us on a Skype phone call for the first time. Um, and we had some other guys yeah. that came up through divisionals with me and we grabbed the, some of the Philly guys and <clears throat> kind of just built a team. So it's like building it from the ground up and having the support of family is, is probably one of the most exciting things. And uh, I think Tyler got to experience that a little mm-hmm. bit this past, this past weekend, past 10 days, um, just being around the family, you know, Nico's, Nico's dad and, uh, Devin's grandma, my grandma, mm-hmm. my parents, you know, we have a big supporting cast. So it's, it's, we got a, we got a posse that follows us around for sure. Oh yes, yeah, we do. absolutely. Yeah. And they, <laughs> they let it be known anytime they're in the, in the VIP, wherever they are, you better be heating them up. Otherwise you ain't cool. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Heating them up, baby. <laughs> Chirps all day. Dude, they I love get it, me dude. pumped. That... I'm yeah. so amped up when I hear them from like the field and I hear them yelling. I'm like, let's go. You know, like, yeah, baby. Uh, they're so juiced and just mm-hmm. the sweetest people ever. Um, Ryan, that is no lie. It's for the family and you guys have a beautiful one. It's uh, It's rare, you know, to find such great family like that, um, that is just relentlessly there for the squad no matter what through the ups and the downs even uh nana she let you guys have it you know she was telling war stories too she's not afraid to let it fly oh, Nana no. has to you know um to help to make sure the team's headed in the right direction oh, <laughs> get a couple that. miller get a couple miller that. lights in that her. probably holds a lot of she's weight full... yeah oh yeah it does <laughs> it does for sure <laughs> Yeah, dude, that's, that's really cool, man. I mean, to be able to do something that you love with the whole family around, you got to appreciate that. That is a really cool thing about Houston Heat, the organization you guys have. Um, mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, there's probably nothing better in life than to be able to do stuff with your family. You know, I come from a, a old school background. My dad was much older, Italian, um, always wanted all of the kids to be in the same family business. He, he loved to do stuff with his kids. I got into paintball with my dad. Um, before it was paintball with me, he was into, you know, motocross with my older brothers and it was just always like, everything was always done as a family. And it was, it was, you know, um, that's the greatest thing growing up. You know, I feel bad for my friends who didn't have that connection with their parents. You know what I mean? I I always felt really fortunate that I, that I had that connection. I feel like it helped me stay on a, on a good path and, and respect the, life lessons that, you know, my dad tried to teach me, you know, cause I had that bond with them. So, um, to be able to share paintball with, uh, with your family is one of the most amazing things and you guys are doing it at the highest level. So that's, that's pretty damn cool. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. And I know we've gotten a lot of parents involved, you know, Ronnie's parents have come to tournaments cause my dad bothers mm-hmm. him so much and it's just like, come out, come out. So I think, <laughs> I think the first world cup, they ever shout out to. Wayne. Yeah. Shout out Wayne. I think the first world cup he came to, we won that. So he was like, he's stoked but yeah, yeah. families oh, I like remember you say, that video on- families just it's it's an interesting thing and you know sometimes we get mad at each other but at the end of the day everyone loves it and loves being around one mm-hmm. another that's what family's all about family's all about uh you know the ups and downs that's you know that's real life stuff and you know but the most important part is you guys are always there for each other you always stand by each other and have each other's back to the fullest and are pushing each other to be better than we were the day before, you know? Um, and I actually, I remember seeing that video on D's on docs, shout out to Ronnie, uh, when, you know, him and his dad hug and he's like breaking down Mm. after they won world cup and it's super real, you know, it's real emotion. And, uh, man, we felt some of that emotion this weekend, um, with the squad. It was really cool to, to see everybody and, and get that W. Yeah. It's, it's, it's raw emotion. It was like, in it, its mm-hmm. finest form. So yeah, yeah. Let's let's dive into that a little bit, Ryan. How, how how was this win in comparison to some of the other wins that you guys have had? Because obviously, Houston Heat has had 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 many wins, World Championships, back to backs, all that kind of stuff. Where does this one rank on that scale for you? Um, this one was yeah, it was it was different. Like I was uh, for me, I was excited, but I like didn't even really know how to take it because. It's kind of a, it's the first time where I've got to actually play in a final and played throughout the whole tournament. So, um, you know, it was just a Dude, totally, totally different feeling that. throughout the whole tournament. Like, you know, it's just emotionally in my head, it's like some self doubt of like, am I really the best one that should be out there? You know, but you're put out there. So it's like, clearly you just got to believe in, in Todd as the coach is like, Hey, you're going to go out there and you're the one that's going to do it with the other guys. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like when it came to the finals, I'd, 
started freaking out and I didn't tell anybody, but I had to like go sit in a porta potty for like five minutes, I think is what it was <laughs> and like gather my thoughts. And I was like, just sat there and then I finally started like sweat and I felt like I was in a sauna and it, it made me totally relax. I was like, yeah, okay, let's go do this. <laughs> Yeah. It debated once I found out yeah. I was going to be on the show. That's I debated hilarious. saying that, but I was like, yeah, I just sat there. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> trying not to freak I love out. It. And gained some composure and was just like, yeah, I looked down at my hands and kind of like it all became real. Like it's shaking a little bit. You know, it's something that people dream of. And, you know, we've been to a lot of finals, but it was like, I don't think I'm really going to play. And then this one was like, hey, we got to go get it done. And I'm part of that. So. You know, mm-hmm. it takes it, it takes a whole team, all the guys helping the pits and everything. But it's just like when it comes to actually yeah. playing, it was like I definitely got pushed to a, a new mental mm-hmm. level and emotional level, which was, you know, something that I'd never felt before. And then when we went on, I just didn't even know what to feel like. I was excited, but relieved. But I just like <laughs> went over and changed clothes at the grandstands and just sat there while it was empty and stared at the field. My dad asked me if I was okay, and yeah. I was like, "Yeah, man, I just don't know like what's going on right now." <laughs> that so, is so that cool, is so, dude. Hey, so cool. Ryan, you balled out, bro. You balled out mm-hmm. this weekend. I'm so damn proud of you. And man, um, you know, when we needed to make shots, we made shots. When we needed to make moves, we made moves. And you were connected. You were there. You were present. And you know, even like we had some audibles even in the final game. We we laughed dude. about it after. Um, yeah. coming down to that last point, I'll let you kind of describe it. <laughs> yeah, it was just like I was de- I was supposed to shoot Greed away, is what Todd wrote down, and uh, mm-hmm. I was like, "That's it." And we got over there, and Ty got to the box. He goes, "Is anybody shooting Snake away?" And I'm like, "No, no, we're not." And he just screams, "Just shoot that way, shoot that way!" <laughs> and like three seconds, I look over at Todd, and I just said, "Todd, we're out of bowling. I'm shooting the other way." <laughs> I guess the guy in the pit started <laughs> laughing, but. I- I was like, I don't. I hope this is the right thing, and it ended up we were able to hold off impact, which was good. But it was just like, you know, there's stuff like that. Is just that, well, you that shot him off the break too yeah. with that, yeah, that switch. So it's just the you know it's, uh, the, it's, trust, it's the trust it's in everyone, <laughs> and uh, mm-hmm. the the connection of like you know having the support of the guys on the field. You know, it was like Tyler believed that we needed to shoot that way, and he was going to take care of the other side and everything worked out so mm-hmm. you know having having yeah. tyler's energy brought a whole new whole another level to the team which was awesome you know sorry to take that from you marcelo but mm-hmm. took a piece to of my it. heart you know <laughs> we appreciate you sharing it uh exactly sharing right sharing yeah. as long as you understand i'm just sharing <laughs> over here <laughs> dude honestly i'm just blessed to have been able to both of you dudes, you know what I mean? To share the field with both of you dudes. It's paintball is such a special game. We're able to connect with so many people and like get so many different reads on how to, you know, undertake this thing. It's like, it's living chess with a whole bunch added on top mm, of it. Yeah. Um, and it's really just so cool to be able to like have so many different insights and Ryan, you, man, you've been able to play alongside some of the best players of the world, Marcelo as well, some of the best players in the world. And just having, you know, all those different characters that add to our game, it's uh, it's tremendous. And paintball, man, just love it. It's so, it's so uh, surreal that we're able to do this at the highest level. It is. And, you know, something that I like take in from watching everybody, because it's so hard. You can remember players and people and their styles and whatnot. But it's like when you watch great players like Marcelo, yourself, Tyler, you know, Ryan Greenspan, Fedorov, Mishka, I mean, any of those guys that are just top level is like in any sport, they have the ability to slow the game down. Even though it's going full speed, there's this there's this pace that when you watch it, mm. it's like it looks calm, collected, it doesn't look hectic, it looks coordinated. Um, and it's just like that's when you know I think you're you're elite and you're at a professional level is when something that is very complex a player can take and make it look to the human eye that it's easy. You know, it's like when you watch Steph Curry shoot threes, mm. you're like, oh, yeah, I could go out and do that. And then you just hit and ram <laughs> air balls and, you know, it's like it makes it look so easy, you know, and I, that, that's what you guys do. Mm. And that's when it's like truly an art form and I enjoy watching that and being part of it yeah 
Dude, yeah, well, you I was were saying you were out yeah. there making some art, dude. You really were. You you mm-hmm. played phenomenal. You had a great weekend, man. And and actually, I feel like you've you've answered the call um, a lot recently. Anytime he's called your number, you've stepped up for the past couple seasons. You know, and and any spin that you've gotten, you people around the league have taken notice and been like, man, Ryan's playing really well. Actually, you know, he, he's definitely a threat on that team. So it's not. Oh, yeah. uh, it's not like this was this was totally out of the blue of you getting the start. It's kind of been a long time coming, and I'm excited to see, uh, or I was excited to see you you get that opportunity to uh, to get out there and showcase your skills. I was a little bummed. I'm like, you know, when you uh, decided to take on the coaching role, I was like, you're not ready for that yet. You got some more playing to do, <laughs> dude. You know what I mean? You got some more some grinding to do. You gotta, you know, uh, not that you couldn't coach, just that you know you have so much so much playing time left. Um, so it was awesome to see you on the field proving that and uh, being just consistent all weekend you know that's like the hardest thing for a player to do is have consistency to where the team can rely on you and answer that call man it's awesome yeah thank you thank you yeah and it was that you know a little luck too <laughs> shooting people off the break like we did yeah. a little luck practice a lot of <laughs> a lot of practice but a little bit of luck involved there too you know there's players yeah. that run different speeds different spots, shooting guessing and i mean you got to guess right yeah, hey, I, I love right. being lucky. I love yeah. being lucky. <laughs> so, I mean, Tyler, it's Tyler's weird. Uh, like the more I practice, the, the luckier I get. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's he's good at that. You know, it's something that a lot of people uh, hadn't given Tyler credit for, too, for a long time. You know, Tyler was traditionally more of a one, but you just look at him as a paintball player. His gun skills are are uh, impeccable. You know, it's immaculate. So, of course, his off-the-break shooting is phenomenal. And, um, you know, at World Cup, when when we won in 2020, Tyler was shooting people off the break left and right. You know what I mean? So that's mm-hmm. definitely a huge asset. And your guys' height helps, too. For me, I was in that back center. I did, like... There was only there was certain shots that I couldn't do, you know, because I was like, yeah. okay, I know the shots here, but this is about as far up on my tippy toes as, <laughs> as I can get, yeah. so I can't really get the angle. Um, so mm-hmm. having the height definitely helps. Um, but man, yeah, off the break shooting, dude, it's one of those things where it is a fundamental skill, like snap shooting. Obviously, it's you know you have gun fighting, off the break shooting, and running and shooting. So you can drill it over and over and over and over, oh. but it still takes a certain level of experience to execute. You know, because the timing and the rhythm of all three of those fundamentals um, play a major role in actually succeeding in getting those eliminations. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and I think the experience part too yeah. is like, you know, having the different heart rate and the adrenaline, and you know, that's something that people experience. But when you first come up to the pro level as like a new player, if you ever get to shoot off the break, is like your anxiety and adrenaline is going right because you're on that main stage that it does take, like you say, it takes experience to, to learn how to deal with that timing mm-hmm. of like what your mind's actually mm-hmm. processing and what your body's actually doing. You know, it's something I think I struggled with um, playing earlier years is like, you get on the main stage, it's like, you kind of get starstruck and it's like, Oh, I got to remember to do this. Um, and then trying mm-hmm. to make it a habit. So for sure. And that's, that's where like the flow state comes into play, you know, like whenever, you almost aren't thinking at all, actually. It's it's already programmed into you yeah. what you're going to do. You've already gone through it in your mind so many times. Um, but yeah, for sure. I, dude, I remember when I first started playing pro, bro, I was, I, I needed a diaper on because I was pooping myself. I was like, oh my God, look at all these guys, bro. There's, there's you know, all the biggest names in the world. I got to play against these guys. Are you kidding me? And then you start thinking so much, you know, and then yeah. the thoughts uh, cloud you. And it gets in the way. But if you if you just like, boom, be present and embrace the moment and then just like almost not think at all and just get into like your zone of, of what you know you got to do, then it kind of clears it. But for yeah. sure, it's like it's nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah. So it's but it's a great time. You know, there's nothing like it. Marcel, you speak about that all the time. Yeah. Tyler, you speak about that all the time. It's like, you know, you the top yeah. level of what we do. There's you, I mean, there's no, there's no higher. You just win. And like everybody mm-hmm. thrives to get that win and that high of winning. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so crazy. It's, it's the it's greatest form time. of meditation to me. Sports are, 
sports are sports are fantastic in that way because they're just so captivating. You know, you're you're forced to be in the moment, and especially a sport like paintball where there's mm-hmm. a you know somewhat of a painful consequence if you stop paying attention <laughs> to what's in front oh, of you. Oh, you it know? can be there can be a definitely a painful <laughs> consequence. Yeah, yeah Marcel, so you, you uh, down to it demands your attention. Uh, <laughs> man that was uh that was a fun one didn't finish the that play was. though unfortunately didn't yeah. finish the play um mm-hmm. but that could have made the game a little more interesting instead uh you guys went on a little run and shut the door on us <laughs> yeah that game was good though like we talked about it last night on the uh, we have like our goat team meetings shout out to the patreon family um oh yeah and uh we had our goat squad that was together last night just talking about you know what happened in um a bunch of the games and the dynasty one could have been a lot closer you know um there was just a couple little things that happened that that allowed us to you know get that little advantage and that gap chad george points yeah everybody played really good 100 percent. but that's that's what it always is right you go back to any any event that you've ever won or lost it's always like one little part of a match you know one point Mm -hmm. here dictates you know like a three-point swing sometimes i know it sounds crazy but it just it's how the Mm -hmm. flow of these games go and And, uh, you can always look back and you're just man yeah Mm -hmm. you have those three-point swings it's like when you get one you're really taking two Mm -hmm. you can be absolutely you're you're setting up how the other team's going to have to play how they need to attack if they're going to defend like what kind of strategy they have to use you have such an advantage, you know, when you, when you, especially if you steal points, that's why, again, that, that point, that two on four, man, that would have been such a, such a massive one. I've been kicking myself for it, of course, because, um, I did the hard work. I did the hard part. Honestly, let's be honest. The hardest part was done. And then I, I just dropped the ball and forgot about Chad over on in the 50 snake, which is, is crazy. You know, I, I got mm-hmm. sucked into uh, trying to shoot Tyler, but, um, that's what it is at the highest level, man. It's the little details. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Like, yeah. I see you, Tyler. Yeah, he, he was boy. hunting me. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work. Um, oh, anyway, but, um, you know, I, I have so many tournaments where I could go back and it's just these little things where if, if I would have just been a foot over this way or if I would have connected on this shot, you know, just one shot, the whole event could have been different. Um, but that's why you're one of the top players in the world is because of that kind of processing, <laughs> that kind of thinking, you know, um, never you being to. satisfied. And like being hypercritical, you know, the, the best players are really hypercritical and that's, that's how you excel. You know, you got to break through those barriers. Yeah. It's yeah. There's Mm -hmm. always something you can go back and watch and always something you'll always go back and, and think about. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's totally, there should be, but there always should be right. And if not, (laughs) yeah, yeah, Yeah. it's, it's cool in a sense that it is the best. Because we have field layouts, right? But you're never going to play that field layout again, which is like strange, right? Is mm. you know teams will go back out on the same it court, is. but right. we don't do that. What's your totally. take on that, dude? I, I've I've brought this up on the show a couple times. Just like paintball doesn't have a court, it doesn't have a like a you know football has the football field. Everything has its court. Paintball is one of the few things that doesn't. It still doesn't have a court or like. Uh, the style that is, you know, going to be pressed into the future for a hundred years. You know, we don't, we still don't have that completely dialed in. We play on a brand new layout like every month or two and God bless it. There's so many different forms of paintball, but I would like to see the court, you know, or the type of arena that we're going to play on for, you know, the next hundred years. Be, it would be interesting, you know, because it's like if you played on one, what would happen if you played on one field for the next hundred years? <laughs> I know. Yeah, or something that I, is like, I don't know, there's there's a way that we can do it. It might not be the same field, but there's definitely a way it can be done. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think the the field layouts changing is one of the most fascinating parts of paintball. I think that's what, that's a huge thing that makes us unique as well as mm-hmm. and, and makes it such a high level mental game. Um Yes, it, it's hard to find certain things that you can go back and, and watch once an event's over, but I'll use an example. We'll, we'll stick with that two on four, right? A very valuable lesson for me is something that we always preach. If you're on the Dorito side, don't get shot by the snake side. If you're on the mm-hmm. snake side, don't get shot by the Dorito side. We're always preaching that to front players, yeah. right? 
I made the move and I remember, you know, part of it was being, you know, tired. We're playing back to back points. It's really hot. It's humid. Um, you make this move. And in my head, I had made the decision. I have space here because it's just Tyler, but I knew I was playing big. Like all this was going in my, in through my mind in like a millisecond, right? I was thinking it, but I, but I, for some reason made the decision like, ah, I think I'm fine. And I remember feeling like there was some sort of risk in the decision I was making, but I ignored it. Mm -hmm. I, I remember feeling that way. And then I got shot and it happened quick. Like if you watch the film, it happened in like two seconds. Yeah. The lesson there is to, to trust that feeling. The lesson there is no matter what play as tight as possible. You know, mm -hmm. that is, there is something to take away from that. Even though I'm never going to be on that field again, when I went back and watched, I said, Oh, I easily could have just kind of slid into this spot and, and automatically been tighter. So in my form and in my technique, if I was a hundred percent on that, I wouldn't have gotten shot. And who mm -hmm. knows, maybe I could have then got a shot on you and, and then maybe on Chad. Right. Yeah. But I'm never going to play that layout again. And the field's going to be different, but that's still a very valuable lesson for me. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Maybe they have like modular bunkers that they move around or something like, and we do at this point, but um, I don't know. I just, I think that, you know, obviously the NBA, the NFL, you know, pro soccer, all these pro sports, they have really dialed in and manicured and made this thing look just as pristine and professional as possible. Um, I just, you know, I, I'm always thinking about pushing the game and how we can, we can get there. So I just, uh, you know, I'm always curious about how we can do that. For, for sure. Just to play devil's advocate though, Ty, cause I've gotten this from you. Something uh -huh. you talk about all the time, which you're, you're spot on with is comparing us to the gaming world, right? Mm. Video mm -hmm. games, they don't play on the same map, you know, True. every time it's They got a bunch of different yeah. stuff going on and they're doing just fine. You know, we need grenades and rocket launchers. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them in, dude. I'm down. I'm, I'm down. Well, I think it was Tyler yeah. I was talking about. It. It was like, <laughs> we, need a little, we need a map, you know, where they like have the bunkers and then mm -hmm. we all yeah. have, we have little sensors yeah. on us that like record where we yeah. move. You know, so you can actually like you could collect mm -hmm. data on routes. You could collect, you know, our location yeah. on the bunker. So it would be like a little Call of Duty UAV map, but for paintball. So you just see mm -hmm. up in the corner, it'd be like the players' dots running around. Yeah, Heck I yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I support Esh that idea. Uh, Esham, we had uh, Esham, yeah. the director, um, and he was bringing up that kind of concept. He was like flying a drone above the field and getting that kind of an optic as well. And just like a map overview, we need we need the map overview somewhere in the viewing experience so that the viewer can see, you know, where all the pieces are at and they can kind of play the game as well and start to see how it's, you know, formulating. It's a never-ending topic. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I know it's fun. And it, it'll never it end and that's the beauty of it. And, and it shouldn't end, right? Like we, we do need to constantly be pushing these conversations and, and discussing them. And that was the goal with, with play the game was to start having these conversations and bringing these ideas to light, hopefully, you know, and uh, yeah. mm -hmm. if nobody's talking about it, then you can't even begin to execute <laughs> it. So that's very yeah. true. Hey, right. We want to know, obviously we got to get the grassroots. We want to know your paintball entry point, how you got into this crazy game that we play. Um, I know you and your dad, love playing paintball. I don't know if you guys started at the same time playing together or how that developed, but how did you get into the sport? So I was about eight, I think was the age when I first played. Um, for people that don't oh, know, wow. my, dad, my dad worked for UPS for 34 years in the management world. Mm -hmm. um, so he first went paintballing as a form of like team bonding um, through the management world. And he went the second time he took me and I went and played and just got hooked, you know, ended up finding friends that wanted to play at school. And then we started with three man young guns, which I don't even know if they have those tournaments anymore. <laughs> I know. I, I hope they do. Cause that's how I got started too. It was three man. That was, yeah. that was the jam. So, so where, in, where exactly did you like, what area did you start o at? Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. <laughs> we lived in Edmond, Oklahoma, just awesome. outside of Oklahoma City. Um, for like three years lived there, but I really started playing when we moved up to the Midwest. We moved to Naperville, Illinois. And that's where like I got into tournament paintball, started geeking out about buying 
mm-hmm. guns and like got an ion and shocker and then eventually an, an ego and we were, we were with planet eclipse yeah. for a long time um and then started a divisional team called distortion mm-hmm. um, which was kids from the local field and high school buddies and we played a long time till 2011 um i remember distortion vividly yeah. for sure oh damn yeah. okay that's that's yeah. wild yeah so we played uh 2007 was when we created distortion world cup it one of the last years it was at disney was our first world cup first first psp tournament yeah um so Dude, those were the best at uh disneyland yeah 2007 was to 2011 was all divisional um and then everything after that was pro but my dad got into it and he he yeah. loves the game more than anybody else. Like shout out to him and Bart Yakimak because those dudes just have yeah. a pure like passion for the game that they don't even play. <laughs> and they're not mm-hmm. even in the the manufacturing world of it either. Mhm. So has he does he ever get out and play some paintball or um did he start, you know, when you were younger playing alongside you? No, he never played like when we played with my friends he never really played um he just yeah. took us out there like just him and my mom you. had this yeah. thing where it was like no matter Fully. what their kids wanted to do they would try to support their kids to the best of their ability so of course um, that ended up being paintball for me yeah uh, my hey, brother me too, was brother. <laughs> big into gaming my sister she was just she was never really athletic so she was kind of just hung out with friends but uh they, they did a great job and they've created a community that they love more than anything. And um, yeah, I mean, here we are like the 10th season of Houston heat, which is crazy to think about. I mean, dynasty just had their anniversary. Yeah. And for me, that's like, wow, you guys have been doing it over twice as long. Um, but mm-hmm. it's been like the fastest. Yeah, But it's actually crazy life. that you guys are halfway there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's that's you know, wild. Whoa. Next year would be our 10th getting... year on calendar, Whoa. but this would be our 10th season, which is like, mind-boggling to me you right, know it makes right. me now i'm feeling old it's like wow what have i done with my life for the past <laughs> 10 years <laughs> and hey. uh, sorry how, how old are you rye i'm 28 i've turned 29 this year 28 yeah okay yeah we're we're getting up there dude yeah. knocking on 30 <laughs> yes sir he start hurting coming for you buddy oh, man. Hurting. <laughs> yeah how you're preaching you, to the choir <laughs> <laughs> i am 32 Okay. Two years yeah, old. Still young. Yeah, yeah. Luigi still a young himself. buck. Um, it's crazy that I've yeah, Lu- Mr. Luigi over here, Mr. Mustache Madness. I've been uh, I'm coming up on twenty years pro here shortly. Wow. Um, so that's even crazier that that's knocking at my door here. And honestly, I feel more inspired than ever and happier than ever to be a part of this crazy ass game that we get to play. It's just the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I know there's, you know, thousands of people out listening right now that agree that paintball, it just does something for your life that, that nothing else can, you know, it just is, it's a, it's a spectacular game with, with even more spectacular people. And uh, we're all, all of us here so fortunate to be able to do this, you know, in this small community that we have um, at the level that we have it at. It's just, it's crazy. It is. It's very blessed for sure. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It's the best part of the game is, is the people and the experiences, the friendships, the relationships. I mean, it, it is our whole life, right? Like mm-hmm. everyone that gets on the show, it's, we could yeah. talk about it for hours on end. I mean, it, it is, it's your whole life. It's not like, Oh, I go play paintball on the weekends and then I've got my normal life. <laughs> like, no, uh, uh-uh. uh, I'm, we're all <laughs> in this, this is our life. You know, paintball is, is everything. It truly yeah. is. And, and the people mm-hmm. in the sport are everything. Um, you know, I wake up and it's, it's all paintball 24 seven, something to do with paintball, you know, uh, not always playing, but something. And yeah, uh, it's, yeah. A, it's yeah. an amazing play the game, game now. Now it's all the time. It doesn't stop. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> all the time. Well, that's why we, that's why we even started play the game is because we couldn't play paintball. And so we were like, <laughs> well, if we can't go out and play paintball because of the pandemic, we're going to play yeah. the game online, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to talk about playing the game. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, and you then, uh, you know, job. here we are. We've just been having a blast. Thanks, oh, thanks, brother. It's been so much fun and so rewarding, you know, just to database all this uh, paintball knowledge from everyone and get mm-hmm. everybody's stories. Um, it's It's been the most 
honestly, the biggest achievement of my whole paintball career is sitting right here on this screen with you guys and, you know, broadcasting these stories out for paintball because it'll be around forever. Now it's, you know, mm-hmm. all these things are data-based, so it's really special. Yeah. Appreciate it. Totally. It is, it is special. Yeah. yeah so, it, so it is. So man. dude, let's, uh, let's kind of hop, hop back into your lineage here and, and talk about how you, you know, got into playing tournaments and, and how you were around, around that time, what was going on and how you, uh, you know, eventually got to the point where you're at now. Um, yeah. So it started with three man, um, playing at the Badlands, Rennick Miller's field. Um, so like nice. big, big aftershock history there. Um, but would go to bad yeah, boys mm-hmm. toys and look at all the paintball garb and gawk and dream about it, you know, go to Chicago when it was at Bowling Brook, when it was like really nice ground next to the water park. Yeah. Um, and go oh, yeah. buy gear there cheap, like cheap for what I thought was cheap. Um, <clears throat> played, yeah. just played three man's like got a couple friends from school and was like, Hey, let's go play three man. And we go out and practice, you know, we try to be bothering your parents to like, let's go out this weekend. Let's go out this weekend. Unfortunately, my dad was always like, okay, we'll go, we'll go. And you know, you go out and you shoot your couple cases. <laughs> he was supportive and making sure we were doing good, you know, pop up tent, barbecue, playing scenarios here and there. Mm. Um, and then it just like, I got went from like one or two kids at school to like three or four, a couple guys from the local field. And it rolled into like a five man and playing the Midwest series, the shy town series. Um, and that's actually where we got Ronnie from. Played with Ronnie for I don't even know how long. I mean, probably fifteen or more years. Like it's crazy to think that I've known Whoa, Ronnie that. That's long. crazy. Yeah. Um Yeah, I had no idea. From there we moved to Canada and I was playing there and I would either like I just got my driver's license in Canada and I convinced my parents to let me drive to Chicago to go practice, which was like eight hours. I'm like 16 years old with a signed note going across the border. <laughs> um, got my first speeding ticket on that drive. Like had American plates on my car. I was going like there five we miles go. per hour over and pulled me over. And um, But would go back and forth. I mean, every other weekend, my it ended up being my senior year of high school. I missed like 26 days of school because of paintball. And they're like, you're not supposed to graduate, but you did good in like you past everything so <clears throat> we'll let you graduate um but i was just always going back to chicago to play with my friends play paintball with the guys you know our team distortion and we were just constantly playing you know the local events and then all the psps and then practice in between and i always preach that to kids was like you know play as low as you can as long as you can because once mm-hmm. you go up it's hard to go back down right unless you're fed off then you're mm-hmm. a semi-pro player mm-hmm. <laughs> wait what dude that's yeah, a funny joke because this semi-pro. tournament yeah <laughs> how did they make that mistake Fedorov has uh, like 30,000 points <laughs> they restructured everything so I guess because he didn't play last year he dropped down but that's just this his is- ranking was semi-professional at the at the last event yeah so he's the number one semi-pro player in the world that's the, the funny semi-pro joke player to get the golden barrel <laughs> too <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that must have been a mistake though they uh, because it's my understanding that even if you don't play for uh a full season as a pro you won't drop down to semi-pro i i don't know how it worked we were just all giggling about huh. it when he went to go yeah but he was in. he was huh that's hilarious dude, dude that's hilarious yeah. <laughs> better off thinking like all the world cups he's won all the events that dude has yeah. a mountain of points you know it's yeah. funny i don't know much about the appa system i'm sh- i doubt you guys do either we've we've been doing this mm-hmm. for so long we haven't really had to worry about it yeah it, but i have so many divisional players that we coach and work with that it, like they'll rip all the time they'll come and be like well how many points do you have or how do you not know how many points this player has or that player has or you didn't know that you couldn't go down two division whatever it is you know they're always calling me out and i'm like i don't know about any of this stuff but <laughs> it's a it's a it's a riot i guess it's definitely a thing so i oh, think yeah. i think they would all say that's a good thing if he if he was low or maybe not. I don't know. I know they're always complaining because they feel like they get uh they they get pushed out of playing their divisions from their their regional leagues, right? You know, yeah. they play a bunch of, you know, division three tournaments in the regional leagues and then they go and play like a division three NXL event and get worked and they're not ready for it, but their ranking like forces them to play up. 
Um, yeah. And that's that's kind of an issue to to my understanding. Mm-hmm. But um, so that's why I always preach like yeah, play in, as low anyway. as you can as long as you can because eventually you're going to take this right. big jump and it's going to be like whoa, you know, like D two to semi pro yeah, and mm-hmm. then semi pro to pro is like that's a that's Huge. a big one. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. and I was learn such we valuable in, things at each level. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we were going back. I was going back and forth. Um, from Canada when my dad got moved there for work. <clears throat> um, and then we got linked up with some people in Canada and started playing CXBL. So that was kind of like a good bridge, you know, it was like we ended up getting together with mm-hmm. some pros that I would p- played with like the Aftershock guys, Nick Sloviak, Zach Patient at the time, um, Chad Boucher, Sam Monville, like those guys were at Badlands and we were practicing them. We were fortunate enough to practice them as a divisional team. It was like, hey, do you guys want to come up and play CXBL? We got a spot. Like my dad got linked up with somebody and I got linked up with somebody. So we played CXBL for three or four years, um, which was that was the the best 15 minute halves, 15 person rosters, 15 balls a second, like like mess up 15 on 15 on 15 (laughs) um and we won a couple of we won a couple of those but that was a good gap bridge so we played that and uh we actually played um the cxbl finals and division two uh world cup finals like we played those two tournaments in the same place at kissimmee somewhere or uh, lakeland or wherever it was and my dad and i sat down and calculated Mm -hmm. it was like 93 points of paintball is what i played that weekend Damn. Yeah, between the two. There was That's a time insane. where it was like semi pros and divisional straight to the finals of CXBL, like halfway through that match. And that like I kinda I kinda flashed back to that and like used a memory this past weekend of like, you know what? When I did that, I couldn't like I couldn't we'd practice so much I couldn't miss people off the break that tournament. It was like shoot the short guy, shoot the far guy. We were playing four on fives because you had the penalty boxes where it was like five minutes. We won six points straight. So it was like, mm-hmm. you know what? Like when I was in that porter potty, I was like, I, I can do this. Like I I know what it takes. I just have mm-hmm. to do it. Like just focus up and I kinda use that memory of like the ninety three points that I played. It just puts you in the muscle yeah. memory and the mindset of like, you know what, we can do this. And you go out there and shoot people off the break and you know, let it let everything take over. <clears throat> so that gained yeah. that gave me a ton yeah, of experience right there. Muscle memory. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then we played against the damage guys. I think we might have played against you, Marcel, up there somewhere along the way. You played CXBL, right? We did. Yeah, yeah. I, we played with um, Lockdown, I think was the name yes. of the team. Yeah. I played with uh, me, Mouse, the Edwards brothers. Yeah, you guys beat us one year, I think. Mm-hmm. So. We did, yeah. I only went up there one, I think maybe two seasons. I, I played like one event one year and then a couple of, of that second year when we won the championship. It was like, it was so cool to go up there and compete because you got the big rings, the super big trophy. Yeah. That was like the cool thing about playing the CXBL. You know, you got these badass rings. Um, and so it was, it was cool to go up and get that. Yeah, if I pick the monitor up, I'd take yeah. you to the garage and show you the, the trophies lined up in there. <laughs> <laughs> rings, I trophies, bet, dude, shoes. Dude, actually... Oh mm-hmm. man, dude! You, I don't think anyone has really seen that. You guys don't post about that too much. You should, though. I bet it's epic. I bet you guys have I, a great. I can take a photo collection. and send it to you. It's not that. I mean, it's cool. It's. I'm sure a lot of kids, dude, would yeah. please like to send see it, it over. It, but yeah, I just got them lined up. It's. Um, but it's funny because I have those. But you know, the memories that are made of all of these places that I've got to go, um, and the experiences of what you mm-hmm. learn to mm-hmm. get you to the top level, is just. I have these three shadow boxes. Um, kind of off track a little bit but they're like right above me on the wall they're three feet wide by five feet tall and they have three outfits in them one of them's from running with the bulls one of them's from Oktoberfest, and Mm -hmm. one of them's from the pyramids in egypt and it's like looking at those you know and getting to do that stuff with your friends because of paintball um and all the things you learn about the world right and and about Mm -hmm. people and about the game and helping people it it it's just like a never ending cycle. You know, you meet some of the most successful people playing paintball and you get to take a piece of them with you mm. and they get to take a piece of you. So mm-hmm. that's the most rewarding aspect of this whole thing right there. That is everything, you know, the connections and Marcelo, he talks about all the time, you know, traveling around the world and 
you know, not staying in the hotel and like living like on the streets kind of, or with your buddies in a house yeah. crammed together, or, you know, all those crazy stories coming up in the game. Those that's everything. Those are, you know, those are timeless. Yeah. Shout out to Tim Montrester, mm -hmm. the man above now, but, uh, yeah, I think somebody did a slide yep. of him and it, we went to Oktoberfest and his outfits up here. It's hilarious. I, so if I think on the, whoever did the slide <laughs> put, uh, Tim and Chad at Oktoberfest and I'm in the middle, but that person didn't know who I was. They just thought I was like some random German guy because I had like the leader hose <laughs> on and everything. <laughs> but oh, I just that's hilarious. <laughs> like I get to like I got to travel Tim with him for so many years and just yeah. learn all about paintball. Yeah. The ins and outs, you know, the game, his smarts. Mm -hmm. And he would tell you he played so much longer than I did with Marcelo and around Tyler and all these people is like he could tell you about mm -hmm. their skills and their styles and their mindsets and you know you don't always get to talk to every pro player especially when you're not one that plays a lot mm -hmm. because it's kind of like you know you're pro but it, like the elite kind of talk to the elite and it's you try to be open to everybody but nobody has enough time to do that right I feel like uh, other professional mm -hmm. athletes are like that um so mm -hmm. being able to like have one guy that's an in or two guys that's an in and you just learn about the person through another person is, is really cool too. So, yeah. you know, getting to come up Dude, and talk and, to me more about Timmy. The guy he was, I want to, uh, I want to hear the stories, dude. We like, I mean, he did, we did well for himself and he worked right. And he worked in the industry and mm -hmm. he got paid to play and he did everything. But like, beside the fact is, he would always want to have a beer everywhere. He would always want to be mm -hmm. what we called experience rich. It's like you have people that want to be mm -hmm. rich, but they never get to have experiences. So he was about experiences. He wanted everybody to enjoy mm -hmm. that. And it was it was something special, you know, mm -hmm. hanging out with him. Made everything fun even when it was miserable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was I was really fortunate because I got to know Tim really well because of traveling for paintball yeah. here in the U S I didn't, I didn't keep in touch with them too much. You know, every so often we would connect, uh, especially in the more recent years, because we would talk about um, more high level stuff with the game and, and ways to move paintball forward, kind of more political stuff, I guess you could say. Um, but, you know, we'd go to Australia four times a year. He was always in Asia. He yeah. was always in Europe. And you know how it is over there, both of you. When you go over there, you kind of gravitate to the other pros that are there. And, and you you connect. You you hang out, you know, whether it's going out Sunday night to uh, the bar to have a couple of drinks or dinner or, or go do something fun. Um, and Tim and I got to have a lot of amazing conversations. And that man is – the game was really fortunate to have him. And, and we are so lucky that his presence is going to honestly live on forever. Mm -hmm. um, and what he did with the 10 man and bringing the the love for the game and the spirit back is huge. Um, but man, I can't say enough good things about Tim. I really can't. And I'm just so lucky that the travel from paintball allowed me to get to know him, you know, cause he was everywhere. If, if there was a foreign tournament, he was yeah. there. So <laughs> it was like, you know, whatever international point that I was going to, I was like, Tim's probably going to be there yeah. and, and maybe Ryan, you know, like <laughs> those are the ones that are going to probably be there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was it was so cool to be able to get to know him in that setting, and um, you know it was uh, it was his passion through and through. Yeah, it mm -hmm. was, and you know it's just it's just it is like that connection when you're overseas is like you know you don't get to talk to that person. You might not like that person in the U.S. because you got to play against them, but it's like when you're overseas, it's <laughs> mm -hmm. like we got to stick together. We'll play against each other, but it's yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> hanging out with each other and having a good time. So he did that and he and yeah, he wanted right. everybody to experience that he wanted people to go around the world because i mean he went back to school and got his master's in business he was a very smart person and he could have worked yeah. anywhere he wanted basically but he he never found or he found a never ending love for traveling and he just wanted to travel like anthony bourdain anthony bourdain was his like his idol who he looked up to you know mm. um and he just found so much more education in going around the world than sitting in, sitting in a classroom. And he preached that, like, just go travel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's yeah. true. What I mean, a legend. It's mm -hmm. where I've gotten my greatest education, hands down. Um, the things I've learned and experienced from, from going to different countries and um, 
basically living with the locals, you know, that's what we do when we travel to these places. It's, it's rare that, you know, I'm isolated and by myself, usually we're guesting with a team that is from the area. So, you know, we stay a week or two after you get to really experience things like a local. Um, It teaches you more about yourself and, and the world and real life issues and, and uh, all of that than any book ever could. I mean, it truly does, you know, it's, it's real firsthand experience and just um, emotions and how people interact with each other, you know, sociological um, perspectives. It's, it's really fascinating, you know, what I've learned and, and what all of us have been able to learn. And I think that's why a lot of professional paintball players, especially the ones who've been doing it for a long time, we're, we're all more alike than we, you know, want to admit. We have some very similar <laughs> personalities and, and understandings and outlooks of the world and for, for the better, you know? Um, yeah. And it's because we've kind of been shaped by similar experiences, which is a really, really cool thing. It's something that I always preach, you know, when kids are asking, you know, what, what do you get paid to be a pro paintball player? And I say, how much time do you have? You know, um, how much mm-hmm. time do you have for me to explain this answer to you? Because I'm not just going to give you a number. Um, yeah. The answer that I'm going to give you is, is much greater than, than any number or any checkbook can, can kind of whip out. So um, if mm-hmm. that's not worth it to you, I understand. But, um, you know, if, if it is, there's something really valuable here in this sport and what we do. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's why all of us have done it for so long, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. You get paid in experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Exactly. Man. When you like, if, if you haven't been able to get out of your city or your state, just go travel. It is, it's awakening, you know, especially when you get out of the United States, when you get out of the United States, you realize real quick how fortunate you are because there's so much going on in the world. Um, we live in a, an extremely beautiful country. It has its problems. What country doesn't, but you know, it, it really just broadens your perspective and opens your eyes and you you come back like wow you know super grateful I feel like and like humbled um, because there's certain things that I've seen traveling abroad you know refugee camps and you know people displaced because of wars or or you know crazy things that are going on um, and it's just you know we gotta we gotta really be humbled and, and grateful for all that we have because uh, we have a lot going on inside of here I know it's been wild but we got to stick together and just stay strong, you know, for the culture, for the people, because uh, it's a, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful planet if we choose to make it that way. You know, we got to we got to make that choice. Yep. You do also see how much we complicate things, though, too, which <laughs> oh, is yeah. an amazing 100%. thing as well. You know, I've I, yeah. I, I've been I've been so many different places, and you, know, you call it a third world country. It's technically, I guess, what you would call them, but their level of happiness with so much less is, is fascinating and it's eye opening and it's something Truly. that makes you sit back and go, I'm worrying about the wrong things, or I might be mm-hmm. worrying about the wrong things. You know, um, I think there's, there's a greater, um, you know, thing going on here that I need to understand. And, mm. uh, it makes it a lot easier for you to put things into perspective and appreciate things. You know, I, I come home often. I know when I would travel, when I was younger, you know, I first started traveling, from paintball when I was like 17, 18 years old internationally, I came back and just hearing conversations of my friends from high school and, and the things they were talking about and the things that were, were worrying them. I was just like, what, what are you talking about? You know, like what's, what's going on? I don't know. It, it, the more time that I spent traveling for paintball, the more that I would come back to my friends and was like, I just can't really relate to you guys as much, you know, and uh, mm. it, it just kind of got more and more distant. I'm sure very similar for both of you, you know, because mm. um, it does put a lot of things into perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big world, man. It is a big world out there, people. Mm-hmm. Big world and you got to <laughs> fly around. You guys man. follow Matty Marshall? You guys, yeah. you, guys, you guys follow Matty Marshall though, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, he was posting all this stuff today. Uh, so by by the time everyone hears this, unfortunately, I think the story will be gone. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know if you guys saw. Oh, like Jupiter. The, dude, the scars on, on uh, Ju- was it Jupiter or Pluto? Jupiter. Was- Jupiter. Okay, the scars on there were like th- that they're bigger than Earth, you know, than our mm-hmm. entire planet. And that's like our protector up there in the sky, stopping all of these, you know, asteroids and stuff that, that without uh, without it, they would come straight to us and just wipe out our entire civilization. Yeah. Following mm-hmm. Matty Marshall, if you guys don't follow him on Instagram, you guys are missing out because he he often has these amazing gems of knowledge. And uh, <laughs> this picture was was insane. Um, yeah, you're right. It, it was Jupiter. Let's see. I'm going to pull it up really quick for the uh, 
for the YouTubers. You can see right there. Oh, wait. There we go. Yeah. That is Earth, an Earth-sized scar on Jupiter to like put into perspective how massive that thing is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Talk about perspective. You know, we're, <laughs> so Earth is the world is really big, but it's also really small. We could go down that wormhole. I don't know, Ryan, oh, yeah. if you've had much time to to talk with Ty about this kind of stuff, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I, think I'm a, I think I'm in a room with him next event. There we go. Nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> Roomies. Like, yeah, yeah, you're right, Marcelo. It is crazy, huh? How like mm-hmm. the metaverse is is monstrous. And and then it's also, you know, on the macro and the micro, it just, it goes in and out forever. Um, mm-hmm. But it's crazy. It is all about perspective. That's it right there. I just 100%. see stuff like that. And it's, <laughs> so uh, shoot. It's crazy because we fly around the world about four times a year to get our hundred thousand miles, and that feels never ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and here we are. You must fly cosmos. American. You must I'm fly United. American. I'm United guy. I'm right in the middle. I, okay. Americans, okay. Americans right. low end okay. on the totem yeah. pole, and Delta's Delta's high end. I have a, but I have a United. <laughs> oh, all right. Hey, there we go. We. We have a believer on the show. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I wish I could be Delta. Delta there, anytime you want to make the switch. I, I, I can't make why, the switch. Why because can't you? I just, Houston's is a United hub and I can go anywhere in one stop just about or less. So yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. If, uh, if, if your airport is, uh, is not a Delta hub for sure. Yeah. I, yeah. Often like some of my flight routes, I'm like, this is so dumb that I'm doing this to stay on Delta, you know. <laughs> but I love Delta. I, I love it. So yeah, uh, you know, it's all good. You know, stick and with you it. stack up the points, you know. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I get to go hang out in the lounge and walk around airports, get my steps in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> For a couple sure. layovers. Heck yeah. Um, yeah, so, Rod, totally. I think when we left off on your on your lineage, we were in like the CXBL. Um, you you guys were obviously you know, talking about winning some tournaments and killing it in that league. Can you kind of talk to us about that experience and how it developed into, um, you know, what became Houston Heat and uh, into the future here? Yeah, so 2011 was Division II. Um, with Distortion, we won World Cup, which was our first tournament win. Um, then we won CXBL nice. at the same time. Um, and then Boom. a couple weeks later, I played on Aftershock. Um, and we won MPPL Las Vegas. That was, was that your first pro tournament? <clears throat> that was my first real pro year in MPPL and first pro tournament win. I think we, Marcel was playing for dynasty wow. then. Mm-hmm. When, no, not in 2011. Oh, were you not? Yeah, no, no, no. 2012 was when I, when I went and played with them. 2011, I was with infamous still. Okay. Mm. Um, so our Sunday was for that was, um, like the last three matches was infamous, which we, we beat impact and then dynasty, the greatest cheat of all time. Shout out to Alex Goldman for wiping that loader hit off the break full stride. (laughs) Unbelievable. (laughs) Unbelievable. (laughs) And shout out to Cassie Sanders for catching that on film in slow motion. So we get to enjoy it for the rest of our lives. (laughs) I know, dude. It's like one of those things where it makes cheating look cool, and that's not good. <laughs> you no, know? that's I, not good I, because yeah, he, he just not did good, it so well. I mean, in all fairness, I'm not telling kids <laughs> to cheat, but if you're going to cheat, don't be a cheater and a liar. <laughs> just tell people that you cheated them. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's hilarious, true. dude. <laughs> um, yeah, that yeah. is that's some damn good advice right there. Don't be a yeah, cheater so and a liar. That. <laughs> we won that and then my dad was like hey i think we can do this like we just took all these guys that never won an event we won three events and like yeah a matter of three weeks like we're gonna skip semi-pro we're gonna get some of the divisional guys we're gonna get some pro guys and we're gonna make a team and we're gonna learn us and win with them Mm -hmm. um so before you get into that i want to ask you what what was it that started this catalyst? How, why did you guys start winning? Like there was something that happened, a, a way that you trained, some, some type of awareness that you, you know, stumbled upon or something that happened that, that started that winning streak. What do you think that was? I think it, having two tournaments, playing CXBL 
like just, I mean, you're playing mm-hmm. four times, mm-hmm. five times the amount of paintball. It's just like, there we go. It astronomically Tons. boosts and you're, it's not, but it's not going and practicing, right? It's playing these tournaments and mm-hmm. getting experience, you know, getting the, the pressure, mm-hmm. the experience, the, the flow of the game, mm-hmm. the different levels, the ups and the downs, you know, um, <clears throat> Marcelo picked up golf. I can mm-hmm. go play golf, but I don't go play golf often, but people that learn to play golf will learn that it's mentally one of the toughest things you can do. And yeah. if you ever have a Absolutely. doubt about anybody in your life, if you go play around the golf with them and you don't know them that well, you'll find out about that person and what kind of person they are in that four hours. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and it's true. Like you'll find out if they're going to keep score fair, how, if they cheat, right. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh-huh. You'll find out, um, you'll find out just what their boiling point is. If they're calm, you know, if they can mm-hmm. forgive and forget, if they can keep going, if they can make it through, you know, it's like it's, you have a great hole and then you go mess up and it's like how you recover, mental stability, uh, honesty. It's just like if you if you have to learn somebody fast and go play around the golf with them. Um, and, and totally. Figure, I don't know how figure. fast that is. You still it's still like five hours. You know? <laughs> it's four hours, but I think that's why a lot of business is done there. But it the, depends. It take mm-hmm. takes me about five hours. <laughs> I gotta go but, uh, searching. I'm lucky. You know, I, I don't play very every often. <laughs> I don't play very often, but we have a golf course across the street. Actually, we have they put in a Margaritaville. Like they changed oh, the nice. resort into a Margaritaville. And Margaritaville, whole, baby. Yeah, the okay. hole across the road from our driveway is the 17th hole. So I can use the houses of Act 9 to get my own lunch. And There we go. Um, <laughs> dude, I so that. I got to I, I gotta share my um, my new favorite drink. It's it's honestly, I, I believe it's a problem. So sorry for sharing this with the listeners. But, <laughs> um, and I never, I've never been a big fan of tequila. Probably my least favorite uh, liquor out of, out of all of them until this drink. Um, and it was on Cinco de Mayo. I went to this restaurant down uh, near downtown for lunch, and they had this special. It was called a, a Mexican candy. So I now make my own version of it, but it's a skinny margarita <laughs> with muddled strawberry, okay. mm. and it is so delicious with tahini on the rim. Oh yeah, it is so delicious. <laughs> I, I could honestly drink them every single day, and it's a problem. You don't feel like you're drinking like just one, just one. I just yeah. want one. You know what I mean? Just one. Have the tahini. It's like a nice little, you know, it's so good. Uh, but obviously I don't and can't drink them every single day. I'm just saying, yeah, it's refreshing. Do they do they have something like that at Margaritaville? They have to. Uh, I've driven over there. They have a bar called Land Shark, but I, I try not to go over. I got okay. my own sanctuary, sanctuary, <laughs> Land Shark. sanctuary over here. Uh, yeah. There you go. Oh, okay. Nice sanctuary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dude, yeah. Strawberry. We're going to have to play some golf. We're gonna have to get get together and and shoot around so we can. Uh, I, Marcelo, have we we still haven't even played a round of golf together? That's crazy. No, nah, we just went to Top Golf. I know. I yeah. Know. Maybe I'll come out we there got- to AZ, but I'm gonna wait for it to get a little hotter before I do that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's only like 110 the, right now. Yeah. So getting like you know the experience through CXBL divisional play, um, mm-hmm. and then it was like, you know, my dad looked at it as a financial standpoint of like, if I build a team, we have a chance to win. Right. And I get sponsors. Like if I pay, I could pay the same amount basically and just skip semi pro. Um, mm. And I think that was, you know, he found mm-hmm. the right people. He found Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nick Sloviak. And then the divisional guys we had, we had a team. So it was just like getting it to the level that, he wanted to so that we were able to win and he found he found the mm-hmm. guys for that um so he just asked me one day he's like hey do you like is pro something you're interested in and so i was like hell yeah I'm like let's do it if you want to do it let's do it yeah um because you know it's like every kid would say yes right but he's always seen mm-hmm. me as like the level-headed child kind of um so it was like you know if, if you feel like you want to do it then i'm in with you right but i'm not gonna it's your resources and your time. Like I'm not going to be selfish and be like, yeah, we're doing it. I just wanted to make sure it's something he yeah. wanted to do too. So it, mm-hmm. 
just Dude, that's so cool that, that you guys that get to cool. yeah oh, i was just saying it's so cool you guys get to do that together like that's that's amazing yeah um but it's like we we made that turn i mean it was it wasn't really like a like a slow transition it 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 went from playing a lot and playing and having this experience and then like being at this semi pro level and then it's like let's just skip that and go and you know you ride the pine for a while but you get to mm-hmm. learn from these guys um and here i am 10 seasons later like playing my first finals full finals <laughs> so yeah um crushed it yeah there's a big a big learning curve and you know like i even still like to this day i you know, I, I was, ex- I was very excited, but I didn't show it because it, I still like the thing I think about is like, yeah, there's mistakes that you go watch. I go watch Tyler goes and watch. Um, but it's like, I still am thinking like, man, it's like, it's hard to believe that I was the one that was out there. Like I'm looking at myself, like, did I deserve to be out there? And, you know, I practiced and did everything that everybody else did. And it's just like, I'm still taken b- back by that. And I'm like, man, like, you know, I, I think it'll be confirmed with me that I deserve that when it happens again. And my goal is to make it happen again. Right. So it's like when it happens mm-hmm. again is when I'm, I think I'll like show the most emotion because it's like, you know, well, I'm just going to tell you right now, buddy, you deserve it uh, already without another one. You showed that this last weekend that you deserve it. So don't ever, don't ever question that. Cause you played, like I said, you balled out, son. You were going for it. You were, you know, making things happen, hitting shots. So that's that's all you, dude. You did My that. My teammate Tyler weekend. told me shooters got to shoot. Shooter shoot, baby. Let's go. Shooter shoot. <laughs> he used to say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> he used to say that to me. Uh, what kind of shit is this, dude? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh-huh. No, so that was, I that see was, how it is. <laughs> just, just know that whatever he says to you, he's already said to me. Okay. Just <laughs> oh, know I know. That. I know. <laughs> oh man, this I'm okay with the sloppy seconds. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if they're hot <laughs> enough, you know. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, y'all are killing me. Oh, that's hilarious, Bird. dude. That's where did funny. you get your nickname? Where did Where did Birdman come from? Oh uh, well, I got a big nose. See that side pro- profile right there. Me too, uh, dude. I could be yeah. Bird Jr. Can I be Birdman Jr.? You could be Birdman <laughs> Jr. for sure. You could be senior. You're older. There we go. <laughs> um, I wore. Birdman. We were we were practicing Dynasty one time. I don't know what tournament it was. I had like a big old screaming eagle on American flag shirt on for practice from Walmart, like a five dollar shirt. And it was when the snake yes, was a diamond. Dope. And Chad George is like, dude, you got to mm-hmm. get in there so we can scream, protect the bird. And so I got inside there one point while we were practicing <laughs> Dynasty, and they all started screaming it, and they named that's just been bird since. Dude, that is epic! I love that. Yeah, nothing too that's crazy. That's so but cool. I like it. It's and, we, and there's so many rhymes hey. in the league. Yeah, this is true. Also, another question that I have is um, your three man team. What was the name of your first three man team? Direct damage. Direct damage. All right. Yeah. We always we always want to know like everyone's rookie team name because mm-hmm. typically they're they pretty for, funny. <laughs> they make for fun trivia questions later too for for our giveaways. <laughs> yep. There we go. Yeah. So it was Listen direct up, PTG. damage, and yeah. the guys at the field actually nicknamed me Bumblebee, like scenario players and other speedball players, because I was all black and yellow. Yeah. Like black and yellow profilers. <laughs> I had a yellow padded JT hat. I had all yellow empire gear like a yellow ion a yellow loader yep. a yellow dye tank cover it was just a little geek sick <laughs> <laughs> you had the billy saransky og you know style going on yeah uh there's a picture somewhere of me it's yeah. really embarrassing but, uh, uh we got to see that we got to see that picture and we need to see uh you got to snap one of like the trophy room or that area for all the PTG listeners, so they can check that yeah, out. Yeah, I'll get. I'm sure, I'll get that's the epic. They're not all. Not all the trophies are there. I think Yaya has some, and there's some maybe at my parents or whatnot. But there's yeah. a hefty amount. Like, Tight. there's even some of my divisional ones up there. Those are kind of some of the most I'm most proud about too. Is like some local trophies that I have. Mm. You know, playing with friends and starting Me too. And those accomplishments. 
but that led to that led to everything that was the yeah. those were the you know the first steps those are the most important yeah and then ours ours were playing indoor in the winter like i don't know how often you guys have played indoor but yeah not it's, much it's brutal you played in asia marcel yeah in the thunderdome <laughs> what's up you played it uh on Lane Cowie in the Thunderdome. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Crazy place. That was fun, dude. We won that one. That was pretty tight. Yeah. Uh-huh. You had the the full USA costume going for us. Yeah. So <laughs> like playing we grew up playing indoor in Chicago. It's like you play indoor in the wintertime. It's a mess. It's loud. Like mm-hmm. everybody's cheating. You can't see. I hate indoor. It's just thumping on each other. <laughs> so you kind of build like the kind of build the the toughness of getting beat up on by um i mean we had the avalanche guys there like not not old old avalanche dudes but like ian martin um aj trillett mm-hmm. i don't even know davy simmons was playing then um ed mm-hmm. Portman's son like there was a bunch of people this a bunch of midwest people that just beat up on us as kids they laugh about mm-hmm. it and be like oh Tired of the head hurt. <laughs> it does too. Indoor yeah. fields are are so it's so tough to play a game of paintball indoor. Mm-hmm. I've never been a huge fan. It, it's really hard to pull off. You know, shout out to the fields that do it. I've I've been to a couple good indoor fields, but I've also been to some really really bad indoor fields. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, and the bad ones are yeah. are so so tough. Shout out to Boston <clears throat> Paintball one time. Um, yeah, they that's one of the one nicest of the indoor ones. fields. Yeah, mm-hmm. one of the nicest indoor fields I've ever been to because it's big. It's clean. They keep it clean. You yeah. know, like you don't feel like mm-hmm. you're, uh, the the turf is not just all mucked up. Um, but it's still loud and it's still hard to mm-hmm. see in there. You know, like no matter what, it's just it's a hard it's a hard. We have not figured out the indoor facilities yet. Yeah, it'll get you ready though. <laughs> it will. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh yeah. So when when you guys started the pro journey, you had that first event that you guys came in and just won. Um, kind of walk us through that big win because this is against Dynasty as well. Um, you know, at their height, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so when we entered in, I mean, we had Fedorov, Mishka, Sergey. Uh, we had big names, Sam. I don't even mm-hmm. remember our original roster, but uh, it. We, this we was practiced. the Chicago team. Oh no 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 no! You, wait, sorry. Well, you cut uh, you cut out there. So you talking about which which team? Uh, when you guys won the Chicago Seven Man. Oh no, the Las Vegas. Okay, Las Vegas. Sorry. Yeah, Las Vegas. Yeah, was when like you guys won that, Nick Sloviak, Drew Templeton, Chris Osine. Cody Mikowski, a uh, friend from school that grew up playing, Max Pung, Ronnie Dyson, myself, and one other. He said Dyson. Everybody's been saying his last name wrong this whole time. Ronnie Dizon? Yeah. We call him, we call him Dyson. Dyson sometimes just to mess with him. We mix I like up. that. Um, yeah. <laughs> really just call him Rondon. But uh, yeah, I, I'm missing one other one. There's... Um, but yeah, it was it was a group of guys that basically half of aftershock and then half of divisional team, um, and none mm-hmm. of us had won before, and all of us were looking at each other like, hey, "How are we in real, the final?" Real, real quick, I, th- hey, this is the only one I ever do it with. It's Mouse. Should we answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. Do it. Throw throw him in here. <laughs> oh, I just missed it, mother fudger. <laughs> Call him back. Damn it! I say we got to get. Yeah, yeah, we got to get him on. <laughs> And we just had we just had the we old goat on here recently. All right. Mm. All right, let's see if we can get All righty. 89 He's Mouse. He's back on Play the Game podcast. No, we're not. <laughs> we're on live right now. <laughs> we are on live right now. Say hello. We got Ryan Smith. We got Tyler Harmon. Yep. <laughs> thank you Mal. appreciate you guys you had a hell of a final i don't think this will be my demise i'll be back <laughs> oh, I, I never yeah, he's I such never, a legend never thought you'd go away you are a legend fastest man in the league right there legend 
Hell yeah. Let's go, man. Oh, when, man. Are, when are you and BJ going to do a race? I don't know it. Hey, well, you can, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let them have it, dude. Enjoy it while you can. Uh, tell me when you're not live, please. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll call you later. <laughs> All right, bye. Later, Mouse. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's always fun. It's always always great when uh, when we can con Mouse into sneaking on the show. You know, uh, yeah, that was a free had, one. That was yeah. Free I was gonna say right we, had, we had to pay him a million dollars last time to get on the show. So <laughs> <laughs> he, Why, he doesn't live too far from my parents in California. They see him at the grocery store from time to time. Oh well. no way! Oh yeah, wow, he's, he's always got Reese's peanut butter cups in his basket. <laughs> He's busted, dude. That's great. <laughs> that's he doesn't, fantastic. That's a lie, but it sounded uh, good. Uh, yeah, hey. yeah. Well, uh, you know what's funny is I was gonna. I was like, nah. He's a he's a sour patch and skittle kind of guy. Is he? Marsh knows. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, so watermelon like sour patch and skittles. It's like Marshawn Lynch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beast mode. You know, makes yeah. sense. Beast mode. <laughs> dude, it's funny. Sense. Me and Todd were talking about Marshawn. Right before we played the finals against uh, Impact, talking about like Marshawn Lynch, he's like has a saying. He was like, "You run through someone's face over and over and over and over and over. They just don't like that kind of stuff." He has this crazy interview where he's saying that. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. He's just inspiring, man. Crazy guy. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So yeah. sorry before before Mouse uh, dropped in, we uh, we were talking about the big win in Vegas. I kind of just want to walk through that because that's a big moment in your life, dude. That was that was the the catalyst, you know, that opened up the floodgates and and got it all rocking and rolling. Yeah, um, it it was. It was just like the the moment of like, man, it shows. You take a group of guys that play a season together that didn't do too well, and then they had that spark and that drive, and it's like um, you start going mm-hmm. through, and it's Sunday rolls around, and you start at eight in the morning. And you're playing, and then next thing we know, it's like 8.30 at night. We're in the dark, under lights, in <laughs> Vegas. Kind of like, man, this is like indoor. We're on concrete, on top of turf. It's slippery. You can't see. <laughs> it's loud, you know. And then uh, something Tyler said this last tournament was yeah. like, why not? You know, we kind of had that same moment. Like, why not? Mm-hmm. Why why not us yeah. right now? And. You know, you mm-hmm. you draw the bracket of death where it's like infamous, a top seven man team, impact a top seven man team. And then if you make it to the finals, it's going to be dynasty is going to be your, your finals match, which mm-hmm. is one of the best all time seven man teams. It's like, well, this is pretty miserable, mm-hmm. but let's, you know, <laughs> misery is company and we're going to do the it all The best all time seven man team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it was like, we, you know, one step at a time, you start doing it and it, Boom, all of a sudden it's like we won. It's damn. That was tight. Yeah. You know? And uh there's documentary yeah. on it one night in November. And it's just like crazy to go back and, and watch that and think about it. And, you know, what it kind of gives me the chills. Um where can Yeah, dude, of course. Where can people find that uh that documentary or the, I, the video on that? I think it's on YouTube. I'm not sure. Every once in a while it pops up. But yeah, type in one night November paintball, and I don't even remember who did it. I think it was more of I'm not remember sure why it was done, but like one of the local boys or something, huh? Yeah, something like that. And it was just a uh, yeah, it was something I'll never forget. You know, it's that spark, like that start, and you know, it turned into we well, were actually mm-hmm. we're kind of supposed to be aftershock a little bit, but things fell apart with Rennick, and my mm-hmm. dad's like, let's just let's let's do it, let's make a team. Yeah. You no, know, and then we started heat and first tournament supposed to be in Galveston, got canceled, rolled over to Phoenix, playing two tournaments in one tournament, and you know, we were practicing like dogs and just all worn down and run down, but we managed through and ended up coming in second and then be- losing to Tampa Bay and then we beat them the same tournament on the same field layout. I mean a different tournament technically. Um and mm-hmm. it was it was just winning from there. It was freaking crazy what an introduction to the pro world is like watching these guys you're on the team with them and you're winning with them but you're watching them you know kind of win for you it's like dude they're just mm-hmm. so freaking good <laughs> you know? 
He's yeah. like been doing it for how many years? He has the most World Cup wins. The dude's humble, quiet. Mm -hmm. He just loves paintball. Yeah. He's the best, dude. I love Mishka so much. He's a dominator, dude. He he has been uh um you know underrated, I guess you could say for a long time. Not amongst the pros. The pros have always known how nasty Mishka is, but you know, wasn't ever anyone that was one of those uh superstar type players. Um because well, what's funny is I feel like he he he's like a superstar role player. <laughs> if that yeah. makes sense. You know what I mean? He's just an absolute dominator, dude. Mishka is so nasty. Yeah. Yeah, and, he is. And that's something that it, you know, it it takes a special personality to be is like it's a special personality to be a star player, right? And it's a special talent for that star player, but people often do forget about role players, I think sometimes. And he is Mhm. Mm one of the most spectacular role players. Like, I mean, he used to go down the mm. field and shoot a lot of people, but he just wasn't ever flashy about it. He just went and did it over and over right. and over again. Right. Um, and it's, so it's something that I, I do like to appreciate, you know, kind of when I was coaching too. And as I grew up playing was just, you know, I was more of a role player and I'm okay with it. It's a personality thing, right? It's just like, I don't care if we go run down, if I run down the field and shoot four dudes, like it's a great story for me later on, but I, dude, the wind's a win. Mm -hmm. Doing it with your friends, doing it That's with people it, that man. you like. That's everything. Yeah. As long as you walk away with the W, I mean, what else matters? You know, the, um, it's all about the team. It takes every single individual in an organization to get a win. And, we all know if there's one or two that, you know, maybe don't have their head in it all the way or, or you know, not giving everything that they can, it, that could be it. That could be the difference maker. Um, so it takes everybody to get those big W's. Yeah, it does indeed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think in all sports, you know, you have those, you do have those role players. If you look at all championship teams, like look at the Bulls when they went on their run with Jordan, you know, you have Steve Kerr that hits these big shots, role player, even in Kobe days, Derek Fisher, like one of the best role players of that time. You have to have them in order to win a championship in any sort of team sport. Um, totally. You know, they don't get the recognition, but without them, those rings are not happening. You know, those rings are not coming back to that city. Yeah. Um, and basketball, I like basketball. I mean, recently I've faded in and out of it for political reasons. I just don't think sports should be tied to politics. So, um, mm -hmm. but one of my all time favorite organizations is, and our guys have heard me say this all the time and they're probably tired of it is the San Antonio Spurs and, and pop. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't pop know if, yeah, yeah, I don't, and I don't know if a lot of people know, um, but like, Tim Duncan played for one team for 19 seasons and he's now part of the management and coaching staff. He has five NBA championships and took a pay cut. They were the best passing team. They would pass the ball. They involved everyone. When you would watch them, you would almost get dizzy. And that's kind of when golden state went on their run was like, they had the shooting percentage, but they learned that San Antonio Spurs passing ability. And it just made them elite for those, that run that they had. But that's like that's an organization that people want to be in, and the success came with it. Mm -hmm. But because there was not really a flashy all star, it's like it kind of gets set aside. But the statistics of Tim Duncan and having five championships with one team and playing for one team is pretty wild. Because you look at LeBron, who is one of by far the best players to ever play the game. You know, I mean, he's up there with the best. Whoever you want to argue with, Kobe and Jordan. LeBron's up there mm -hmm. um, with what, three or four championships, sure. 18th year, right? He still hasn't even, he hasn't, he hasn't accomplished the championship level that some people have. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, you have talent all-star, but it's like consistency is championships. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's playing three days of solid paintball. It's tough. It's consistency. And then being, being perfect on a Sunday. Yeah, it's like there's 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 errors on Sunday, and you're hoping that you have less errors, and you can't say you were perfect until you won. 
Yeah. And often, even if you, even when you do win, you definitely weren't perfect. You know, you just no. made less, like you said, just you, you made less mistakes than your opponent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, then, you know, yeah, you go that's back what it's at, about. Mistakes. at the top level, you go back and you look at those mistakes and it's like, you, hopefully you can bank those in a memory and, you know, learn, like you say, and keep those in mind. You know, you, if you go two steps more, just a little bit faster, you know, Tyler doesn't shoot you there. You know, if I go up the middle of the field mm -hmm. against you, when you ran down the Dorito side and shot Mishka and I, like my, my mistake was that mm -hmm. I should have just gone up the, <clears throat> to, to the tower, cut you off, and it would have made life miserable for you to try to fill out, right? So mm -hmm. that's like something exactly, that I'll remember. Sure. You got something that you remember, and then that's what creates that long-term chess match. It's like now Marcelo knows this, and mm -hmm. I know this, and it's like we're applying those things mm -hmm. to different fields and growing as the game grows. and. That's that goes from like the short chess match of that match, that tournament to the longevity of our careers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is something Absolutely. that you could you That's fight well against. Said. You know, LeBron fights against Curry all the time. These big rivalries of of players and teams are created because of all of these memories that they have of stuff that they've messed up. <laughs> Yeah, it's never ending. The progression is is always turning. You know, we're always trying to cook up new ways to be better and and outsmart each other. You know, that's the name of the game right there. Yeah, and and it's cool. So I just yeah, I love I love the game. It is and, man. Uh, having that consistency over the course of three days is is very tough to do. And like you said, like on Sunday, at the very end you know, is where you need to be the most perfect, but it's where you're the most like fatigued, where there's the most pressure, there's the most layers. And typically, you know, it's these little, little things that you've done prior that set you up for that success on that day. And if you haven't done those things prior, or, you know, even been awakened to having to do those things, then it's going to make it really difficult for you to accomplish that goal on Sunday. It's it's such a hard journey to get to the finals. And then when you get to the finals, you have to take it to another level and and be physically ready, not just mentally, but physically as well. Because nowadays, as we see, you cannot win a tournament in the pro level unless you're physically fit. I mean, yeah. the, the teams that are winning are the most fit. That's just the way it is now. Um, and they're they're going to run at you. They're going to make you tired by going fast. And you've got to be ready to play at that fast pace. That's just, it's not the same game it was two years ago or three years ago. You know, it's, yeah. it's multiplied dramatically on that endurance level there. Yeah. When it comes to playing the easiest day was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's uh yeah, man. You know. Yeah. Fitness and fitness and paintball is, is definitely, um, it seems like it's becoming more and more prevalent, more and more dominant, mm -hmm. required. It's, it's, uh, you know, and it's so funny. We had Alex Frazee and even Oliver. I can't believe, I still can't believe in Oliver's episode, he was saying you don't need to, <laughs> to exercise <laughs> for paintball. That's crazy to me. I love Oliver so much, but he was, yeah. I don't know what point he was trying to prove there, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, you absolutely need to be training and keeping yourself physically fit for this game. Um, yeah, and you just see you 100% have to. Yeah, I don't work out <laughs> a lot, but um, I mean, I have a little bike right there. I ride sometimes, but you know, it's like, yeah, there, there's working out, right? There's being fit, and there's staying in shape. But it's like finding what I would call like a joyful movement. You know, you can work mm -hmm. out the most out of any player, but if you don't go practice, you you're never in what our yes. guys on the team call game shape. Get, for sure right? you go yeah. do box jumps all day you'd be the best at box jumps but if you go play paintball <laughs> once a month you're gonna be hurting after it's just like so you you you, you mm -hmm. have to be fit but you have to go play and push yourself which was what todd uh, did a good job of this past practice was making us practice hard and long um to mm -hmm. just this is the situation you're gonna be in you're gonna be uncomfortable so let's get comfortable being uncomfortable um yeah so you need to take care of your body. You need to make sure your body stays moving because when you stop is when stuff starts to go bad. 
So you find that joyful movement, whether it's working out hard, doing box jumps, you know, doing physical labor work mm-hmm. outside like Rocky. Um, I live with my grandmother and I'm always <laughs> doing stuff around here outside in like 98 degree weather. and It sucks. Um, riding a bike, you know, like Devin and Mishka on our team, they love riding bikes. Mishka will go ride a bike for 20, 30 miles a day. Um, Fedorov mm-hmm. loves going to the gym. Chad George loves going to the gym. You know, Ronnie likes, he goes to the gym, but Ronnie likes to go to the park, be outside working out. Ryan Greenspan likes to do that stuff, you know, stretching. Um, but then it's mm-hmm. the, the playing, the going, the doing the snap shooting, exhausting yourself. Like what I learned from Tyler is going around and just doing a, just a ton of snap shooting. It's like, then you're in that game shape. So in those pressure situations, like you're as ready as you can be. <clears throat> Yeah, that's so that true, dude. We always we always say that uh, absolutely on the show. We're always talking about like you can like I work out. Me and Marcelo work out. We do all these things to stay in shape. But if you're not playing a lot of paintball, you're not going to be the best you can be at paintball. Obviously, we need you out there shooting that gun, getting in the bunkers, looking at spots, really being meticulous. Yeah. That's definitely what takes you to the next level. And I want to pick your brain about Cash Money, Todd Martinez, for mm-hmm. a second. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, bringing him into the organization and uh, just how much fun he is, how great of a guy he is and what he's done for the team so far. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously the first tournament we didn't do as good as we wanted. We got Tyler. We got Fedorov. Clearly mm-hmm. it helped a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like I think we had great players and I didn't have doubt in our players' abilities. I think morally having a new coach, learning that system – and missing a couple – well, missing Fedorov at the time, not knowing that Tyler was going to be on the team. Missing Fedorov mm-hmm. kind of mentally threw us off a little bit. Um, but Todd's mm-hmm. a great leader, great hype man, uh, played the game for a long time, has good knowledge of the game, and uh, understands mm-hmm. the flow, the pace, um, You know where we need to draw the line at practice, where we could go a little bit harder at practice. Um, and and putting everybody in spots is like I think he's he's a good fit and a great fit. I mean, yeah. we won our, the second tournament with him, and uh, I think everybody mm-hmm. enjoys his company and he keeps us all all at a good level that we need to be and and beyond that. Um, and he's always got a yeah. smile. You dude, know, he's, he's always just, ready. Yeah, he's so damn funny, dude. I fucking love Todd. <laughs> he's yeah. the best. <laughs> he is, dude. So there's a lot of stuff uh, that people just, don't get to see, but he's he's a great dude. You can, yeah, you can't not smile around him. Like if if everybody's serious yeah. around him, there's <laughs> there's a there's a problem. Yes, yes, absolutely. He's he's done a tremendous job, and I I'm just uh I'm feeling super lucky to be able to get coached by him because I've always looked up to Todd. You know, my whole entire career yeah. from when I was 11 years old watching Push. You know, Todd was one of the people that I wanted to be like. Uh, He inspired me to get out of my shell, you know, and just kind of have more fun just because just watching him have so much fun makes you want to have that much fun. And it's inspiring to, you know, to have that energy in the organization. Huge, huge shout out to Cash Money Martinez. We're going to keep, you know, keep having some good times out there with you, brother. Yeah, the only beef I got is... Yeah, Todd's awesome. I was... (laughs) <laughs> his his what oh his marker yeah his marker doesn't work half the time he, he doesn't need that no yeah <laughs> he doesn't need that that's funny <laughs> um yeah. yeah i uh i was lucky enough to get coached by todd for a couple years with infamous and he's just a a, a very very infectious person you know you mm-hmm. uh you're always gonna have a good time around him he's motivating he knows the game. He's done it. So yeah, Todd's Todd's a fantastic coach, man. And that's why he's had a lot of success, right? You know, recently had one with the Iron Men, comes over, wins with you guys. He's had success in Europe. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Todd is uh has definitely proven himself as a top level coach. He brought Vicious up, you know, those kids brought them up right. from pretty much nothing, got them into finals or the top four. I forget. I just remember one year they did really well at a World Cup. Yeah. Um, but he's he's done it, you know, kind of time and time again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, he's the man. That's cash money, baby. Joy. Yep. And then dipping back into the heat story, 
Um, I want to just kind of cap that out. And how how did everything come about? I know your dad told us a story at dinner, uh, you know, after we won this last event with Fedorov and Mishka coming onto the team. Um, how did that all come about? And then did you guys have success immediately or did it take some time before you guys started winning? Yeah, so Jason Trojan was the coach of the All-Americans. He, Sam uh, and Tim got him to come over. Um, he was our first coach. Uh, Eric Vunch, who runs Style Supply, was a paintball jersey company um, out of Germany, actually is the one who got us linked up with Fedorov, Sergei, Mishka. Malloy was originally supposed to come, but he ended up choosing to stay with the Russians kind of last minute. Mm. Um, and then the other divisional guys, L. John Woodley, myself, Ronnie, um, we all kind of, like, those were the guys that were going to, we were going to learn, you know, we are, you know, you're going to learn from these guys, like not going to get to play a lot. You're going to get to practice a lot. You're going to get to practice against them. Take notes. Um, Nick Sloviak was in there. Uh, Chad Boucher. And so we, we had a team of veterans that have won a lot. Some guys that played pro a lot and then new guys like divisional guys, us. So we had a good a, a good structure of bones to kind of get some growth and, and still have a chance to win. Um, and yeah, I mean, off the bat, we got a second place and then the second tournament we won. I think we won nice. three, the, the three, three tournaments the first year. So it was, uh, it was, it was a wild ride. It was definitely like a, I think it was a shock to the paintball world of like, wow, there's, you know, a new, a new super team built. It's like, it's not dynasty anymore. It's not, it's mm-hmm. it's not like the the old teams. It's like a brand new team that mm-hmm. came out of nowhere, shocked the world, and started winning, um, which I think was just different. And uh, yeah, it was just it was phone calls. It was all phone calls and blind faith. You know, it's like there's a I don't know if this is too much, but like we were sponsored by Planet Eclipse at the time, and my dad was calling people that he knew and he was close with in the paintball world through divisional relationships. And he just asked that, Hey, I'm making a pro team. You're get first offer like to sponsor us. I can't tell you the roster. I know it, but you have to have faith in me because it's going to be released on my terms. And a couple of people were wishy-washy and, you know, it was, you know, when the when the news broke, it was like phone calls from people that were like, whoa, you didn't tell me this. You didn't tell me that. It's like, I just, I wanted your support because that <laughs> meant like your blind faith in me was just a trust thing. And, you know, that's kind of, that's mm-hmm. partially how we landed with DLX was like Planet Eclipse didn't necessarily want to take that leap of faith. And Sam and them always were sponsored by the All-Americans, right? The, the Shocker, the Ion, the Lux. So they they went to their owner and was like, "Hey Adam, this super team's being built. Like, sponsor it. Just do it. Like, it'll you know." And so we've had that's our longest standing sponsor is DLX, and shout out to them for supporting us since day one. I mean, those guys were ten seasons yeah. in now. Is like best guns in the world. I still hold true to that. Like, I love the way they shoot, what they do the support that they give mm-hmm. the, the the people they support and Adam's hard work and, and ethic through the years of paintball and his research and development paintball. I mean, just the things he's created and done have been awesome. So we got linked up with mm-hmm. them and I mean, we started out off the bat with the best equipment, you know, and that's part of it. So we had some of the best players, the best equipment. And it was just, we were, my, my dad set us up for success. Like it was on us to make sure it happened. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what are the, uh, what are like the long-term goals with Houston heat? You know, is, is it something that you think the, the team will stick around after, you know, you you're done playing or um, you, maybe is there a, a plan for this to be a team for generations to come is, is, you know, what, uh, have you guys thought about so. that? Um, you know, the one thing we always joke about is like, who are the new kids that are going to even come play? This is like, we just don't even think of any like <laughs> new pro players. Like you, we look at kids uh-huh. kind of, and we're like, man, these kids are soft. Like can't see you playing pro. You'd be an mm-hmm. embarrassment to us sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. I think, yeah, <laughs> 
I mean, uh-huh. we've been I, 10 years, man. It's like, that's a long time. And I think my parents love it and they'd like to keep it going and we'll figure out a way to keep it going. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's a blessing and it's, you know, it's just crazy that we've been, had this fortunate wild ride. Um, and I mm-hmm. saw my parents true passion for it. When one year I didn't play for the team, I went and played for a team called VCK. Yeah. And yeah. My mom was real real upset about it um but it was actually it actually <laughs> ended up was being, not happy no it actually ended up being one of heat's worst years they got relegated twice and uh, one of them mm. doesn't count according to some people because that didn't the league wasn't around the next year the psp for people to be relegated but it counts oh, i <laughs> um, see yeah but it was just like it was just not the right place for me at the time and um and my parents stuck mm-hmm. through it. They're like, Hey, we're going to keep it running. And then they asked me to come back and, you know, we had a, a talk, a private talk about some things and said, I'll give it a whirl another year. But if I don't like it, then you know, it's either got to change or I gotta, I gotta go somewhere else. And um, I think that showed their true passion when their son didn't play for the team. Like they kept it going. So mm-hmm. um, I think it's, it's like, dude, their ten- hobby. 10 years that that's a long time and it always hasn't it hasn't always been like you know first place first place you guys have gone through the ups and downs kind of like walk us through some advice on on how you think teams can navigate that because you guys have been doing that for a long time now and um you know i do also want to add that randy and what he does like you said he always sets the team up for success it's on the players to get the job done and, and make things happen. But um, that's one of the greatest things about Houston Heat is, is you know, they're going to put you in position to be successful. You got to go out there and get it done. So, like, kind of walk me through how that has, you know, transpired over the 10 years of, of the team being around because um, that's a long time. And it's, like I said, it's been through the ups and downs. Yeah. Um, so it started, I mean, day one in 2000 whatever when I was a kid and it's still to this day something that I will teach my kids is preparation right you know you Mm -hmm. have the physical capabilities but it's like are you showing up in the morning cleaning your gun are you showing up in the morning replacing your batteries are you not showing up with gear Mm -hmm. my dad used to make me sit in the kitchen clean change my batteries the night before all of my little local tournaments and make sure that all factors Mm -hmm we're ruled out, you know, stuff happens where it breaks during games that you can't control, but it first starts with preparation of knowing that all of your equipment's ready. Um, so Mm -hmm. I still have a routine that I go through, you know, before every tournament, before every night is like cleaning my gun, you know, replacing batteries. Um, so I'll do like, you know, I'll clean my gun after the Thursday practice. So it'll be ready. And that usually, I'll let it go Friday, Saturday, and I'll replace my batteries and my loader and charge my gun. And then Sunday, I'll recharge my gun. I'll put fresh batteries in because part of Sunday is, you know, eliminating, oh, yeah. eliminating those errors. It's like, I don't want to be in the finals. And for some reason, I forgot to change one AA battery and my battery goes dead and it's overtime and I have a gravity fed loader. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> totally. And then, um, so that's like part of it. And then two, you know, is no matter what anyone says, you're going to lose more than you win. Mm. And it's the, it sucks, but it's the realistic standpoint of it. So it's like you, you want to win that drive to win is always there. And that's what keeps us going. And you will win as long as you're determined. And as long as you keep going, but it's going to take some losses along the way. And winning's contagious. Mm-hmm. Marcelo knows that. You know that, Tyler. Like you can get two, three wins, but you just can't keep winning. So mm. you're gonna hit a dip and you're gonna come up from it. You just have to be sure that you're ready to hit that dip and then come up from it. <clears throat> you know, so it's like mm-hmm. that's the mentality of a winner is you get that championship once, okay? One time, there's obviously luck. That's what people say. Two times skill you know and then you're gonna take a dip maybe third time you take a dip whatever fourth time you take a dip it's like now you're gonna have some doubters and people saying oh see they can't keep it up 
and you have to mentally fight through that. Like you know how to get there, but it's now it's getting back there. Um, sometimes it's a change of personnel. Sometimes it's a change of coach. Sometimes it's taking a break. Sometimes it's just getting people all back on the same page. Um, but it's that's part of the battle of being the best is you are the best. You got that target mm-hmm. on your back. You know, somebody's going to do something to try to throw you off or you get thrown off and it's like getting back on that horse and getting up there. And it's almost more rewarding once you win that next time after you got defeated. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like because you show that you can get back there. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, totally, man. I can't say it any better than that. And during the 10 year span of the team, um, how many tournaments has Houston Heat won? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I honestly yeah, do. Um, I do awful of keeping track. Um, you know, I have a goal to win every it's, event. It's quite a few. Yeah, it is quite a few. Yeah. I have a goal to win every event. Everybody does. Um, and then there's like mm-hmm. my real uh, realistic expe- expectations of what I think we should win every year, which I'm not going to share because I don't want to get looked at in a bad way, mm-hmm. but like I have a drive to win every yeah. year. But of course, yeah. I mean, why with, would you not with yeah. factors of paint refs? You know, it's, if somebody ever won every event, it would be unheard of, right? <laughs> it would be like, it'd be crazy. It would yeah, be, crazy, be crazy. Right. So, um, I have my personal goals and I think everybody has their realistic personal goals and their dream goals. And one day I think somebody mm-hmm. could win every event once the game develops enough, but I don't think we're in that stage right now. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, we'll we, have, we'll we have, right here. Wins. <laughs> we have, we have one, right. We have one, we've, we've won almost every, an event every year, which I think is pretty cool. I was going to mm-hmm. say, you guys are probably around if you, if you include uh, Europe, probably between like 15 and 20 wins. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Or my, is it, is it more? Uh, I don't know. I think that you're in the ballpark there. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's a Uh, lot of wins. You know, that's a lot of wins. That's a lot of organization. Yeah. You, you have organizations that, I mean, if they have, if they have one win, they're lucky first of all. But then when you talk about some of the top teams, you know, like five pro wins is like, Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, No, it's, it's astounding what you guys have done in, in 10 years. Um, and you know, there's there's a lot to be said about that. It's it's uh, the work ethic, it's the determination, um, and you guys really really care about making sure that everyone's ready to win, set up for success, and that that plays a huge role too in the success of the story. Yeah, um, and kind of like you know when I didn't play for my parents, I kind of developed a relationship with some guys. I actually played with Nico, TJ, John. Uh, John Jackson, Fuzz Jackson, um, mm-hmm. Cam McCarty, who plays for AC Diesel sometimes, and another kid, Mitch, who doesn't play paintball anymore because um, he went into the business world. And, but I played with I played with Come guys back, that are Mitch. On, yeah, I played with guys that are on top tier pro level teams now. I mean, Fuzz is on Impact. John's been on AC yeah. Dallas. He's on Ironman. They just beat Impact at the last event, like. You know, I know um, that was TJ crazy. Gaynard, <laughs> AC Dallas was in the finals four times, you know, now he's on X factor. Like Nico's been, I got Nico on our yeah. team. Um, I, I mm-hmm. played with those guys the year I didn't play on heat. And I was like, these guys, you know, have the ability to be top level talent. And it's kind of cool to see us all spread across the board now, you know, getting yeah. wins and, and playing paintball. That is um, rad. That's awesome. But yeah, we kind of have a similar thing with with like the aftermath camp, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the same mm-hmm. thing with you guys. Yeah, we Rainy look around and we're like, man, it's yeah. super cool. Yeah, yeah, it's mm-hmm. awesome. and it's awesome. Dalton, and Tyler. Yeah, it's huge. It's crazy. Um, but that's yeah. what builds the camaraderie, the competition, the drive, the talent. Mm-hmm. Is like, you know, I played against this guy for so long. I played with him for so long. It's like you know him, but mm-hmm. it's that constant battle. <laughs> um. And it just yeah. makes it, it makes it that much harder to win, right? Mm. But, um, yeah, I, I, I love it. It's fun. It's unlike anything else. That's for sure. There's nothing Ryan, more what, fun. 
Yeah. Ryan, what do you think were some of the the biggest hurdles you've personally had to overcome in your career? Um, you know, there's there's always like not that there's been like players that I hated or anything, but you know, there's always like a little bit of internal team drama. You know, it's every mm-hmm. team just some guys have scuffs here and there. Um, you know, mm-hmm. when you hit those lows, it's like who do you lean on and who do people blame on your team? What personalities truly come out? So uh, like those are all mm. small challenges that everybody has to work through. Um, and, and just like, you know, how long you sit there and watch these guys stay accomplished and you're part of that accomplishment, but you're not really in the spotlight of that accomplishment. Right. It's like how long you do that. You know, I don't know. I don't, I've never researched, quarterbacks but I look at quarterbacks as kind of like the guys that come up and learn in paintball is like how long did Brett Favre Aaron Rodgers Tom Brady sit on a bench and watch their first string quarterback how much film did they watch Mm -hmm. and try to learn the game how many balls did they throw and routes did they throw at practice hoping that they get the chance one day you know it's like that's something that uh that that's hard, you know, um, is, is how long you got to sit there, how long you have to put in those hours of practice physically and mentally drain yourself to hope that you get a chance to play at the tournament. Yeah. Well, you're in spot. Ryan, you're a Testament. Mishka, Sergey, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Chad George, Ryan Moorhead. Like you're, you're talking about some super established, accomplished dudes that you're, competing against internally so that's like tough that's my dog sorry for sure yeah. it's okay what's your dog's name kona kona so everybody knows shout out to kona yeah you yeah. can you well, can follow Ryan, her her instagram's bitches with my bitch but i don't post too much on it <laughs> there we go follow follow the instagram yeah. hang out with kona and ryan dude you're a testament to what determination is all about in this sport, dude. You're talking about playing pro for 10 years. And this last tournament is the first tournament that you like started finals and, you know, put the cherry on top of your career. Um, and were able to solidify a win, you know, with all the hard work that you put into it. So, you know, everybody listening out there, it doesn't happen overnight, man. This guy has, has been in the game for so long and has been gritting and grinding to have that moment. And, you know, after all that time, he never gave up and he, he secured that bag. You know, he made that a reality for himself. Um, and, dude, we're just, we're stoked that, you know, that you continue to push the game and are still in the game, you know, thriving and having fun with it. Cause, bro, it is, it is truly the funnest thing that we get to do. It's such a blessing that we get to run around on these paintball fields. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And uh just indeed it ad- is. Let's see. Ad- oh, advice sorry. to all the kids out there is like, you know, there's gonna be times where it feels like you're not going anywhere. It's gonna be like you're doubtful mm-hmm. and whatnot, and you know. Um I people can see it as like I mean, I've been told it's like, well, I bought my way into the pro league, but it you know, this kind of solidified it and made me like mm-hmm. sure in myself that, you know, I can play at the top level. You know, playing a final start to finish and winning is that cherry on yeah. top. And it's like, you know, I'm not doubting myself as much and I have more faith in myself. So it's like fighting that mental struggle, you know, when there's a lull is like, just keep pushing through it. And I mean, as long as you can, yeah. and as long as you're willing to, you'll make it through there. Yeah. And best believe I'm going to keep pushing you too. We're going to, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to make sure of it. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Let's go. Yeah, 100%, dude. Um, listen, Ryan, man, this is this has really been a, a, a fantastic episode so far, but I some questions that I want to ask personally, especially because I know uh, obviously your dad is one of the owners of the NXL. You guys are doing great things with the league, and that's you know the direction that we're going to be moving in forward is a lot of it is uh, reliant on the NXL and 
the European leagues and, and how these leagues present paintball moving forward. Do you have any ideas that you think about from time to time? Like if you would change format or do anything differently to, to make paintball more exciting? Yeah. Or let me take that back. Anybody Not to make paintball more exciting. Cause I think, yeah, cause, <laughs> cause I think paintball is very exciting, but you know, as everyone always says to get the, the masses more interested. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it should be no layouts. Um, mm. I think that shows that shows <laughs> true teamwork and it shows true communication and it shows true knowledge of the game. You wrote the book Paintball IQ, and I think in order to develop, yeah, I think in order to, to develop oh, that I IQ, got YouTube. <laughs> yeah, in order to develop that IQ, you can't sit there and play the same layout and then, you know, have the point A to point B for two weeks of like, this is the system we're going to do it. It's like, there's audibles, there's changes, you know, life throws you curveballs. I think paintball should be able to do the same thing. So for me, not even being able to walk the field would be freaking awesome. One of it just to like, it stays completely (laughs) deflated and they blow it up in the morning and a team plays and you get to watch it and there's no grid so it'd be really hard to even draw up again and there's no layout and then in between matches you're not even allowed to go out there and you have to base it upon your experience that day with your team um would yeah. be, i would love it like i think it would show true players like marcelo tyler mouse dudes that j rab dudes that know how to make great moves would get the ability to make even mm. greater moves um, and it would show true team's mm. ability to communicate and work together. And it would disperse kids to go play every weekend and practice communication, fundamentals, instead of just going to the field to practice that layout, to be the best at that layout. It's like, no, I want to be the best at the game, not the layout. Mm. It would, you would almost, there would be no game plans, really. It would be like, you, you would just play the game by position. You know, <laughs> yeah. like if you're the one on the snake side, okay, I get, I'm going to that that looks like it's a snake. And if you're the two and then you figure it out on the fly, the game starts and you're like, Hey, what can you see over there? I just lost sound and all that. <laughs> you know, what's on that side? Communication <laughs> would be, would be pretty next level. Yeah. I, I've never heard anybody <laughs> propose the no layout to that extreme. And I actually almost like that. Yeah. I almost like the way you're throwing it down. I'm not a fan of the no layout. We've talked about it on the show quite a bit, yeah. but I almost like what you're throwing down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's interesting thing, for sure. I, I yeah. <laughs> and then I'm a limited paint proponent. Like after playing limited paint, I love it. I am I think, too. I think four tubes yeah. and a loader yeah. allows you a couple of really good bounce shots, allows a full breakout, uh-huh. a development of a game plan, and then it mm-hmm. speeds up that lull of like sitting mm-hmm. there just ripping paint kind of wastefully, waiting for something to happen. Mm-hmm. Just, it, it makes that chess match. And from the pro standpoint of like sponsors always complaining about spending money on us, like let us play limited paint and then you won't have to let us shoot as much paint. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, but then do they sell as much paint, right? Well, it's a catch 22 there. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think, I think it makes it more budget friendly for divisionals. So I think there might be more divisional teams I do. that would come play because mm-hmm. they fair. Can, you know, a team goes fair. and practices and then they show up to an event. It's like, well, we shot, 40 cases over two weekends of practice and we get to an event and now all of a sudden we're shooting 80 at the event. It's like, cause mm-hmm. the game style changed. Yeah. Um, those would be my two biggest changes. You know, every, I think, I think people getting us to watch like run around on a field layout that nobody knows would, it's just, it's fun. It's just fun. You know, the first, oh, it I sounds lo- fun. Yeah. I love the first <laughs> weekend of a layout. Like nobody knows mm-hmm. what's going to happen or how the field's going to play. We just go to run around and we kind of feel like you're either the man that weekend or you kind of feel like an idiot because you just got punked out because you weren't sure what's happening <laughs> the first day. It's like, that's just such a cool feeling trying to figure it out. Um, so I think it should just mm-hmm. be like that. Try to be like that the whole tournament, you know, Friday, Saturday, you would get some awesome moves and gameplay. And then Sunday people would start to dial in, find stuff out and you would get that slower, more methodical, feel of a layout mm. and learning it um yeah but, i mean guys it's, like a, it's an interesting concept <clears throat> so those would be my biggest ones yeah sorry i missed what you're saying about uh kid arch there oh yeah i just mean like i think like that's just another person that i think 
you know, you could add onto mm-hmm. the list of somebody that would be enjoyable to watch with yeah. his, his talent level and like t- to take a field, you know, is like one thing Fedorov always told me that I still can't ever picture, but I try to is like when he first got on the team, he goes, you should be able to stand backwards on a field, point to a bunker and say, that's the bunker and turn around and be pointing at it. Like if I told him, <laughs> Snake two, he would be like, boom, and he would be on Snake two. It's like if I told him R Dorito four, he would be like, boom, R Dorito four. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if if they can do that in a weekend or like a couple days, and then they can picture this, like build that picture and play that chess match on the fly, it would be phenomenal. Watch, it would just be incredible. I think it would be incredible. Yeah. No, you're not wrong. You would see you would see the creative monsters come out and they would definitely indulge, you know, on a on a format that they don't even know, but just because on the fly they're able to read things so well, read the paint, read the situation, find the gaps, make yeah. those moves. It would definitely be very entertaining. Yeah. What do you think about that, Marcelo? I dig it. I'm a huge fan of layouts. Um Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the cool aspects of our sport where uh, you get to clock in and really dissect and, and put in work on a strategic level. And I love that they change. I love that we only have two weekends to learn them. I love that it changes and is new every event. It resets. I think you see some of the higher level moves because these players get to learn the layout. You know, you give someone like Fedorov time to learn a layout he knows where all the blind spots are. That's how he gets to run down the field running and shooting. It's not He's not just closing his eyes and doing it. He's thought about these exciting moves. So to me, I go back and forth on it. I really do. Um, the argument of local fields, you know, needing those uh, layout releases in order to, to get people at their park. I don't know how much I buy into that as much as I used to. I think people are going to play paintball either way. Um, I just personally like the sporty aspect of it. It gives you something to go do. You can clock in, you can do the drills. Um, not that you wouldn't otherwise, but it would just be, you know, what kind of drills would you do? You know, you don't have, you don't get to just go and shoot free throws. You don't get to just go and dribble the ball. Um, so in that regard, I really do enjoy the, the two week layout release. I think, I know me personally, um, the more time I get with a field, the better I am. Does that mean that I mean, there, trust me, I go overseas and play uh, tournaments where I show up and I'm seeing it for the first time as well. And we typically have an advantage because, yes, I can break it down quicker than other people. Yeah. But still on a personal level, the more time I have with a field, the better I am on that field, you know. Yeah. And so I I want to see the highest level competing against each other. You know, I don't want to see – I like taking luck out of it. You know, I like taking yeah. all of that kind of stuff out of it. And I think – the layout kind of does that, but again, dude, to be completely honest, the way you the way you presented it is a little. Di- if you're gonna not walk the field, then like do away with all of it because that really would change the game to where you wouldn't have game plans, you don't have stuff to draw up, so it changes the <laughs> dynamic of the whole game. Like you Imagine literally that. do have to, you literally do have to. You just press play, <laughs> and you guys are out there winging it together, and yeah. and that's uh. I don't know. That could be fun. That could be kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm open to to pretty much all kinds of things. I just have my my own opinion, and you know, it's not better or mm-hmm. worse. I just uh, mm-hmm. I, I enjoy the layout release, you know. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's cool that there's, you know, it's it's cool that there's so many opinions and ideas. It's my biggest issue is there's no way to exercise all of the different opinions in a manageable, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, financial mm-hmm. way to where we can find the best fit. That's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know Mm -hmm. maybe that's something Mm -hmm. where we could put a challenge out there for local fields to try their own formats you know it's like why couldn't there be a tournament series where it's like you you know used to go to the Chicago event and it was the Badlands event and you would play at the Badlands and you'd win the Badlands trophy and Aftershock would ref it's like why can't local fields have a series where in the city of Houston you know or San Diego, you know, four fields get together and they're like, you know what, we're going to do a series, but every field is going to be a different format. We're going to test different formats. So maybe that's something we put out there where it's like some some 
field gets two weeks to play the event or to practice the layout. We're going to give none, you know, we're going to play no mercy yeah. rule. We're going to play mercy rule. That's, that would be my third one is like, I don't, I don't think we should have a mercy rule. Um, mm. But you know, yeah. challenge the fields to try different formats and tournaments and let's find, let's try to start working towards finding the best format that uh, would be enjoyable to watch for anybody. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it right there, Rise. Just experimenting, right? We still, this is still such in like the infantile stages. We just got to keep experimenting and having fun and it'll solidify itself. And and as we move forward into the future, you know, the paintball universe is perfect. It knows what it's doing and, and it's going to drive itself into the future the way that it's meant to be. Um, before we let you go, we've been going at it here for a couple hours and we appreciate all your time, right? Thank you so much for, for hanging out with us here. I want to ask you... Absolutely, dude. Uh, like something that all players that you think that all players can work on with their game. You know, there's tons of people that tune into the show and they legitimately want to be better paintball players. They want to traverse the rankings. They want to climb up and be top tier players. What is some advice that you could give some players to help their game as they try to make that climb? Um, you know, it's like everybody else says, you know, drills but uh and repetition Mm -hmm. but you know you have people have this drive to watch a professional and want to do what a professional does but develop yourself through fundamentals develop make a plan of who you want to be how you want to play take a conglomeration of pro players that you like form yourself mold yourself Mm -hmm. use examples um but start slow you know, is like when you're doing those drills, start slow. Don't don't cheat them. You know, is like people when they, for example, people when they snap shoot, they'll come out, stop, shoot, go back in. So it's not how you snap shoot, but you can still do it s- s- <laughs> slow. Where it's like when you're coming out, you're shooting, and then you start going back in right away. Remove that pause, but do it slow. You know, mm-hmm. s- slow and correct is how you build. A foundation you know is how you is how you build speed smooth is fast i mean you, mm. it's cliche but it's like slow is smooth smooth is fast you know nothing nothing mm-hmm. good comes quick it's it's time time effort dedication you know it's i mean there's no yeah there's no other way to put it it's just and there's nothing you can't rush it. You know, yeah, you can't rush it. Like, you know, there's the s- simplest form is how it is. It's just learn the basics, build mm-hmm. a foundation, you know, and then when the IQ part comes, that's where the tough part comes is the application and then mm-hmm. taking the, f- the fundamentals and the IQ. And that's what I tell people is like, it's, I don't, I still don't even, you're always learning. You know, Marcel to this day still goes back and thinks of these events that happened on field layouts. He's not going to play on to build his IQ for the next, Mm -hmm. the next event that he's going to play. You know, I did this. I remember to go hard this time, do this. It's, it's that, that Mm -hmm. constant checklist. Um, I mean, if people really want to, they something they could use in their life is like read the book checklist manifesto is like, Mm. it's all, it's about doctors and, building building lists that are simple but complex so it's like when you go to this bunker here's your checklist but it can't be too long because you then you can't do it in the time that you want to do it you know mm-hmm. um, so it's gaining knowledge through that's everything some good know. advice right there dude mm-hmm. yeah that's it's huge like, right dude every bunker that i go to i have a checklist like you're talking about it's we've never really talked about that but like I, I have a legitimate, like each bunker holds a space in my mind that has checklists attached to it. And I know when I go here, I have these boom, 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 boom. I, when yeah. I go here, I have these boom, 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 boom. Each spot has a checklist attached to it. So that's, that's actually really huge um, advice right there. Yeah. So um, the book's checklist manifesto for anybody that likes to read, it was developed basically how mm. doctors started implementing checklists because they would leave surgical tools in people, gauze in people. Uh, procedures for being clean weren't always followed. So it's, it's you know, creating mm. that list for you that's like, when I go here, I do this. When I go to the field, what do I yeah. want to accomplish today? But you can't, I mean, if you actually write a checklist, I mean, you can make one as long as your arm. 
but that's not efficient. So it also teaches <laughs> yeah. you how to make an efficient one, you know, where when Tyler goes to that bunker and Marcelo goes to that bunker, you go to that bunker. It's like, I run through this real quick. I check off the middle. I check off the guy in front of me. Mm-hmm. You know, if that looks good, mm-hmm. maybe I get one last communication in from my teammate and then I bust over and explode into the next bunker. You know, it's like mm-hmm. I get in the snake and I crawl all the way down. It's like, okay, is there a dude in front of me? There's a guy in front of me. Am I going to bunker him? Am I going up one more? What's the procedure? And it's mm-hmm. trying to build that, you know? So that would yeah. be one way to simplify and build your IQ. Mm-hmm. I just bought two checklist manifesto books. Yeah, baby. From Amazon. They'll be here Thursday. Um, <laughs> I'm going to read one, and then I think we're going to have to give one away here on the show. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Absolutely. I like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah awesome. Man. Dude, Amazon's so great. That took me 15 <laughs> seconds. It, 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 is, it is great. Are you kidding um, me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? What's, it's so uh, bad, though. That's I know. Great. <laughs> For any military people or people that just like reading, it's kind of more of a guy's book. Sorry, ladies. But like Extreme Ownership, mm-hmm. another great book. I don't know if you've read that's that, Marcel yeah. or Tyler, mm-hmm. but that's a, that's a good book. Um, yep, mm-hmm. you know, that's yeah, it's harsh, but it's it's real. Yeah, so. that's the best stuff right there, man. Keep it real, keep it yeah. harsh, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan, what what do you do outside of paintball? Do you have another job, or do you do you do anything besides paintball? Or are you full time paintball? Um, well, I live with my grandma. Proud of it. Uh, I help her with. Her. Yeah, Grammy. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll help her with where she lives, help her keep up with her house. Um, it's yeah. basically a full-time job in itself. Um, but I do a little bit of woodworking mm-hmm. just in my spare time. So I built you know, my bed nice. frame. <laughs> you can't really yeah. see it, but Dope. I made it. Uh, you know, as a kid, kind of always had like a creaky bed frame and it would mess with me. So I built a solid, <laughs> solid welded uh, frame. And then put a little bit of wood on it, my desk, my coffee table, the little unit under my TV. Nice. Um, built some stuff for people, cutting yeah. boards and whatnot. That's what I do in my spare time. Um, I try Dude, to stay off a, of I need a cutting media. board ASAP. Yeah, actually, Blake <laughs> Blake came up to me at the last event, and he's like, yo, did you see my Instagram shout out? And I was like, no, I'm not on Instagram <laughs> right now. I'm trying to tone it back a notch because I spent too much time on it. He's like, well, it's the only cutting board my wife will use. And that like that warmed my heart. So, um, yeah, yeah, I do I do woodworking to try to keep me like, you know, off of the off of the phone or the TV. It's a cool place. The internet's yeah. cool. It's big. It's never ending. But I would find myself on it from it's like a wormhole. To tw- yeah, it's like an endless scrolling from nine thirty to twelve. So it's like if I could stay outside doing something till nine o'clock and then go in and go to mm-hmm. bed, I'm happy with that. But. uh Absolutely. That's it. And then, uh, yeah, so working with my grandma, do some woodworking, and then I, I'm i really into, like, long-range shooting. So for any mm-hmm. of you guys out there that like to shoot real guns, um, oh, shout, yeah. out, shout out to, like, 2,065 yards. Damn. So, like a, like a mile <laughs> Holy and a quarter. Holy smokes, dude. Yeah. So learning, That's crazy. Learning all that is, is fun. But time consuming. Reload. So you my probably got a you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's it. You know, find a hobby. People, people Man, use paintballs a hobby, awesome. but hobbies. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, you always got to have an eclectic of of things to do. Obviously, paintballs the the main focus, but. I have so much other stuff that keeps me honest. You know, I think that's a, yeah. a, a important thing as well. You know, we've, we've all sitting here, all three of us have gotten pretty darn good at paintball. Um, so it's nice to have other things that really keep you honest. You know, mm-hmm, <laughs> For yeah. me, it's uh, going out and playing around a golf, realizing, uh, you know, you're at the, at the, you know, base floor of that. Um, whatever it is, challenging yourself in new ways, trying to learn new things, picking up new sports, new ideas, you know, always always good for the mind good for uh just the the soul really yeah, yeah and that helps keeps you in check for sure mm-hmm. <laughs> develops you and transitions your thought on the game too it's learning new things and 100 keeps your yeah. mind turning and you know staying mentally sharp and mm-hmm. you know you can relate you can relate any of that stuff <laughs> absolutely totally 
All right, man. Well, what do you say, Ty? You got any more questions? Um, no. I mean, what are you what are you doing uh, for Fourth of July? You gonna have some fun or what? Oh, it's coming up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're having a we're having a Stanley Cup, uh, Mid Atlantic, uh, yeah, baby, championship uh, party here at the house. All the a couple of the guys are coming in <laughs> with the girlfriends, and we're gonna pour some champagne and beer into the cup, and you guys will probably yes, see it sir. posted online. Sorry, Marcelo, but. <laughs> We're going to utilize that <laughs> bad boy. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to be in Texas this weekend. I'm going to be you? in Dallas, paintball fit. Yeah. For the 4th of um, July? Doing a, doing a clinic out there. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, it should be cool. It's going to be a fun little 4th of July event. I guess a bunch of teams are getting ready for a tournament the following weekend. So I'm going to go out there and help them prepare. Um, yeah. Nice. Well, so you want to find your way down to Montgomery, Shout out Texas, to the you, can, you can come join. How how far is that? Uh, it's like a three hour drive from Dallas. Mm, that's not too bad. The yeah, internet's yeah. going crazy now. Marcelo the Heat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Of course. Chill out, kids. Chill yeah. out. Chill yeah. out. No, we're um, not gonna. We're not gonna but, uh, take Ty, you... that hard. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be right. We can't uh, let. We can't let that happen. <laughs> Ty, are you going out there? No, I will be, you know, staying uh, out here in the AZ area the with kiddos. the fam, doing some fireworks with the kids and having some fun, uh, you know, just hanging out, spending some quality family time. Yeah, I feel awesome. I feel bad, yeah. but uh, yeah. he, when I planned this, he wasn't even on the team yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next year we'll get him there. Yeah, if you guys send me, I'm going to FaceTime you guys. I'll be there in spirit. We're going to pour up. I'll have a drink All right, with you dude. Too. Okay, uh, I got enough. I, it's, it, enough. I've had enough. <laughs> It's time. I got to go, dude. I got stuff to He's do. He's not enough. I'm busy. <laughs> uh, Ugh. That's hilarious. Ugh. I know, Bubba. Nah, hey, I know. again, congrats, guys. It was an amazing win. You guys uh, were lights out through the prelims, except for that level up game. They they came and kind of knocked them yeah. guys' door. It was good, guys up a little bit. Yeah, good, good, for, for, good for them. You know Exactly, yeah. right? That is. That is one of those games where it's, mm-hmm. it's good for you. Um, because up until that point, you guys hadn't really been tested. So the, the mm-hmm. last thing you want is to get tested first thing Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, Which but, we uh, did. Man, you guys, you guys played lights out. You did? Yeah. yeah got, they, played, they played so good, man. They did. I did they congratulate played good. them. I got to give it to them. They were, I mean, yeah. like, that was their first. I congratulated them too. Yeah, that was their first convincing Sunday they made yeah. where it wasn't a wild card. It wasn't squeaking by. It was like, yep, you earned your guys. Yeah. You earned your way there. Yep. And we knew going into that match Sunday morning that they had a ton of drive and they wanted to be that mm-hmm. upset team. And they 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 knew they mm-hmm. deserved to be there. And you no, know, they they gave mm-hmm. us a good they gave us a good match. I mean, you guys were going into overtime. You scored, <laughs> yeah. a, you, you know, that 13 second point, or it was like 11 yeah, yeah. seconds or something. I don't even remember, crazy. but um, you know, like man, they uh, they played phenomenal. They uh, they had us by the ropes as well in the prelims. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, it's good. It's good. The league is getting better. A lot of these teams are getting a lot better. A lot of those mid level teams are really stepping up. So that's that's a good thing to see. So yeah, and major um, shout out to you guys as well, Marsh. I mean, third place. That's where you want to be. We all we're all in the top four. In everyone the fight. on the screen. So that's what yep. it's all about, right there. In the fight. Yep. Yeah, you just got to be in striking distance. That's it. Let's close close out some of those plays and and mm-hmm. tighten up a few mistakes and you know, yep. as long as you're in striking distance, that's a difference. So that's it. All right, guys. Right, where can people keep up with you, brother? You uh, want to share your Instagram with uh, the PTG listeners? Yeah, it's uh, Ryan underscore Bird underscore Smith. I think I'm not on it right now. We go. I'm taking a break, mm-hmm. people. Um, but yeah. oh, okay, he's cleansing. He'll- yeah. yeah. If you need to Don't get a hold of me, Don't worry. <laughs> Facebook Messenger is the best right now. Um, and I appreciate okay. all the support that everybody brings. You know, there's the paintball yeah, community is awesome. great. There's nothing better. Um, and like I say, it's just, you know, keep playing. Keep playing. Play the game, baby. Yeah. Play the game. Hey, let's Play go. Play the game. Play the game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> hey, awesome. thanks, Rye, for coming on the show, brother. We'll be chatting yeah. with you soon. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, brother. All right, PTG fam, thank you guys so much for tuning in. 
do not cut this off yet. You guys want to hear about our Discord. Our Discord is so lit right now. It is amazing. We have an awesome community that we're building. We have a pro player channel where uh, pros that have been on the show and previous guests drop in, communicate, sit there and chat with you guys. We have all sorts of stuff going on. We're doing tons of amazing giveaways in there, contests. You guys don't want to miss it. To become part of the PTG Discord, all you got to do is head over to ptgpaintball.com. Click the Patreon link and sign up. It will automatically connect you into our PTG chat room and you'll be included in all the cool stuff that we have going on. Again, this is truly like the dopest community. Uh, Tyler and I hang in there, hang out in there pretty much all day long talking with all the guys. Um, it's just really cool. We have players from all over the country in there and uh, we are looking to continue to grow this thing. And we really want to thank you guys for your support and let you guys know how much it means to us because without you guys, um, it would be really difficult to put this much time and effort into producing a high quality show week after week day after day and so thank you guys so much and um, again our website is ptgpaintball.com it was designed by rusty glaze if you guys do need a website he is your guy rusty glaze at constant pursuit all right everybody until next time as always we'll see you very soon